to the 10th episode of the Fun Filter Podcast, Christmas Special. Hey. <laughs> I'm joined by uh, Eddie in a Grinch jumper. Hello. And Jordan, who's ill. Yes, in a state of illness. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. It wasn't planned. Yeah. We, um, as well as being a time for Christmas, December is a busy time for us because a lot of our friends uh, have their birthdays around December time, yeah. including yours, Sam. Yes. Uh, we recently... Went out for your birthday. Mm-hmm. We all drank a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We all paid for it in various ways, I think. Yeah. yeah. Go on, what was the cost for you? What was the cost for me? Oh, I've been throwing up for like the last four days, uh, pretty much. I have no idea why. Um, you've been pooping bad? No, I haven't been pooping. Oh, you haven't been pooping. Yeah, That's the problem, bad. yeah. I was pooping bad. Now I'm not pooping. Okay, all right. What about you, Eddie? Uh, I left early and projectile vomited outside of a church. Yeah. Right, um, okay. So You're lucky it wasn't a mosque. Oh, yeah. Be that, fucked. Uh, that would that would I, I think it went down down badly enough as it was. Yeah. Um, although I will uh if by any chance the person who cleaned up my vomit is listening, I do apologize wholeheartedly. <laughs> Cause by the time I walked to work the next day it was gone. Oh okay. Um, okay. So I do apologise. Yeah. It's probably the priest. Yeah. Just go to confession. <laughs> It's been a long time since I confessed. It's like I've ever, never done that. Never been to confession. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. Okay, what's the... Well, not that not you'd say it. What's the worst thing that you've confessed to? Well, I'm obviously not going to say it. Right. He killed, nothing bad. I mean, he killed a hooker once, we know that. That's, <laughs> that's right. the thing, it wasn't It wasn't anything bad. It was just like... The main right. thing I think I uh, atoned for was not having not gone to confession. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and then just like things in my ha- in my life that... I just wasn't that like happy with. It's like, oh, I wish I was better at doing this, or I wish, you know, <laughs> okay, whatever. Well, when was the last time? How old were you when you last confessed? Uh, it was around about the time I was confirmed, so it would have like been, thirteen. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen. Did you ever confess to masturbating? No. I wonder if how many kids actually confess to masturbating. I don't know. I feel like confessed. It's not like for most people. Surely, it's not a genuine expression of guilt, is it? It's like. It's the BBC One seven o'clock slot of guilt, which is, mm. what am I okay? Yeah. What's the PG version of my guilt? That's the version I'm okay saying. Like, yeah, most, I, I, most I, kids. I, I enjoyed myself today. That no, no, say, like, yeah, not, not even going how, there. How do you say that to... Not even going there. Most, I think most teenagers' kids would just say, oh, I wish I came to confession more. I don't yeah. confess enough. Yeah. Oh, I've been have. I got jealous of somebody for this little thing. I wonder how many teenagers are actually going in saying, I beat the bishop, father. (laughs) But, you know, like, figuratively. Yeah. I think kids would be more willing to confessing to beating a bishop than to beating the bishop, I think. What about the bishop beating them? Would they say anything about that? No, no, no. Well, famously not. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. So Merry Christmas. (laughs) Speaking okay. of... Okay, okay. moving on from yeah. that. Speaking of Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. Speaking of sexual assault. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, Harvey Weinstein. No, 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 no. Um, no. Because he doesn't... Uh, it doesn't seem to go away. No. no. Um, and he's... As, as the article says, he isn't apologetic and he's not even close. Uh, so he recently... He's not even close. Is he back at it, is he? <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, no, it's just, uh, he is That's now... That's why he wants to make amends. It's like, oh, i got to get closer. i got to get closer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has insisted that uh, he is the real victim in all of this. All right, yeah. Okay. Um, because he doesn't want to be the forgotten man. Right. Which he feels... I think he'd be forgotten. I was about to say, yeah. he's like the figurehead of this thing now. Yeah, he's he might be, be forgotten. remembered yeah. for the wrong thing, but he's not going to be forgotten. No. That his legacy is pretty cemented. Isn't it, It's called the Weinstein effect. Yes, pretty yeah. much. That's the name of this thing. Yeah. Yes. The movement um, is all a result of the Weinstein effect. But yeah, so he, ha- he uh, spoke to the New York Post uh, and basically said he feels like he's the forgotten man and uh, went on to say that he made movies directed by women and about wo- about women, um, and he's talking like thirty years ago. I'm not talking about now when it's Vogue. Uh, I did it first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did it he's first. A I, had, I pioneered it. Right. Yeah. Um, well, okay. there were no women in cinema before me. <laughs> what, I started that shit. What was the context of this interview? I, I ge- genuinely, it doesn't. It doesn't say. He just says it was his first interview in just more than a year. Um, okay. It's like. Uh, the, the thing about it is, is that he's not wrong. 
In what way is he not wrong? <laughs> he's just not. He's not wrong. Nothing he did was wrong. No, he's not. Um, <laughs> take, I, I, take will, I will say he is. Course. He is facing a rape trial in January. So. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's well innocent until proven guilty. Um, I think that well, that's the bargain, isn't it? Like that. That's the whole reason for this is that uh, you know what? What do you get? Millions of dollars, a career, mm. prestige. What do you have to do? You have to put the scrotum of an elderly Jew into your mouth. <laughs> right. Okay. And it's, <laughs> are you, are you, no, no. Are you victim shaming? I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not victim shaming. I'm saying that he's saying that he's helped the careers of all these women. Okay. Obviously, the conditions of that are totally wrong. Yeah, there's probably ways you can have a career of without course. doing that. Of course. Yeah. But there wouldn't be this whole brouhaha if he, had, if he didn't have something to offer. Okay. That is what he was offering, isn't it? That's the deal. Is you do this, I do this. That right. is the deal. And I'm not saying it's a fair I was going to say, you're not, yeah, no, 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 you're I'm not, not saying like, oh, well, it's fair because they got something out of no, it. No, no, I'm not just saying that okay. technically speaking, he's not wrong. He's kind of a, um, a misogynist feminist. <laughs> you know I mean? right. He's kind of like, it's the, it's the ends. Do the ends justify the means? He's got all these, all, all, these, all these women now have platforms to talk about misogyny. They wouldn't have got those platforms if Harvey hadn't raped them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As ever controversial, Sam. Do you know what? Sam. In an earlier podcast, I would, like, we would have to take that out. It's staying in now. Right. It's okay. Because, uh, I, you know, again, I, I've said it before. I know irony doesn't translate perfectly. No, it gets, through, it gets um, a little bit lost through the airways. <laughs> no, exactly. But we also, you know, there is an irony in that, isn't it? That, about, that all these feminist campaigners suck the dick. That's <laughs> they are. <laughs> <clears throat> so. Yeah, should we counter that by making an actual point now? Or? Um, well, that was the, the actual point. That is the point I wanted to make. Is oh, just, okay. Is, is just that he's not technically wrong. He's not technically okay. If okay. morally wrong. Yes, okay. If. Is that all the article says about him? Yeah, it, I mean, the, 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 it just seems like he's try. He's got, you know, he's just done one settlement, which was like twenty five million dollars. You know, which yeah, yeah it's going to be nothing to him. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, and then he's got the other sort of trial. This trial coming up in January. Yeah. So it's it's just like a, pl- a Christmas plea for. Mm. Uh, please don't forget me this Christmas. Yeah. When the Weinstein Company is on however many thousands of films in America. Like... Everybody's a spooge. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost still- of Christmas past or uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Is it still called Weinstein Company or have they renamed it? No, I mean, it's, it's just, just disbanded or... Yeah, they just... I don't think they use it. Because it's him and his brother, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Let's have a look. Um, <laughs> but his brother's annoyed. <laughs> Guy must be annoyed. Harvey, I didn't oh, no, even they, rape they, one. They, <laughs> they, uh, it went bankrupt in 2018. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an a- open secret, though, isn't it? Like, it, it's sort of the same with priests, as that kind of everyone sort of knew about it. But no yeah. one was really saying anything. Wait, you talking about the it's, public now? Because Hollywood, there were a bunch of people in Hollywood saying like, oh, I was aware. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, Tarantino notoriously said, oh, I sort of knew what he was doing. Okay. But he's a very powerful man. And I don't, it's hard, isn't it, to put yourself in that mindset of, I just can't really, maybe it's because I'm a man, I don't know, but I can't put myself in a situation where I'm not blowing the whistle because this dude is quite influential in the film industry. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Is yeah. That, but that is maybe genuinely like, um, I, mean, I, say, I mean, in Hollywood a genuine way in that sense. Is notoriously corrupt generally speaking it is and the casting couch was like talked about for years yeah like Brad Pitt I think Gwyneth Paltrow told a story on the Howard Stern show about Weinstein had sort of kind of propositioned her and like do this I do this Pitt heard about it and like took it to task for it yeah and then like Brad Pitt has since become known as someone who stood up for like he used his own power against Weinstein's Mm. yeah he staked his career on kind of protecting women and everything. Um, and then still did Inglorious Bastards. What? And then still did Inglorious Bastards, a Tarantino film. Oh, yeah. the Weinstein it's all company. Kind of it's all oh, kind of right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a Weinstein company. <laughs> yeah, Inglorious was still the, was well, the Weinstein. Well, that's a very good point. 
Brad Pitt's a hypocrite. <laughs> hypocrite. Fuck Should, you. Uh, <laughs> fuck you, Brad Pitt. You're worse than Weinstein. <laughs> nah, but he clearly got the part. Even, he, he sucked Weinstein's dick. Yeah. Uh, got the part. What company produced Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Because obviously uh, that's, ooh, that's com- that, that was made after the Weinstein. Uh, is it Sony? Yeah, it's Sony. Yes, like another yeah. uh, one involved. Yeah. Let's have a look. Is it Annapurna? They do a lot these days. Oh, I, oh I'll, pre- I'll press on the wrong fucking link. <laughs> Well, don't do that. No, I, d- I don't want to watch a trailer. I know I've seen the film. <laughs> uh, Columbia. Yeah, that's that's a Sony subsidiary. Uh, okay, it's interesting because I would have thought that Brad Pitt was a douchebag. Why? Why did you think that? He just seems like he would be, doesn't he? Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like Hang men on. like that. Eddie's raised his finger. He's got a point. Just, okay, no, no, no. Just so Quantum of Time was produced by Columbia Pictures. Yeah. Uh, Bonner Film Group, Heyday Films, Vision Owner, Romantica, and then distributed by Sony. Oh okay. yeah, I do remember there being a bunch of okay. stuff at the beginning. Yeah, so they're filling the five. They're filling the yeah. void, like Harvey did. Yeah. Um, we're getting, we're losing viewers from. Well, they, 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 they're, they're consensually filling the void though. <laughs> okay. um, it's the Christmas special. Something's got to be elevated. Yeah, I thought that would be the controversy. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, like when you hear about actors' private lives mm. and what they're like behind, um, you know, behind the scenes, yeah, it's really like, do you know what? He's actually a deep, really decent bloke behind all that. That you really hear that. To be fair, that's a less interesting story than, oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. really a monster. But yeah. Brad Pitt, I, I, I would have guessed, was a dickhead. Okay, if it'd come out that he had done this, sounds terrible. If, but if it had come out that he had been part of all this mm. stuff it wouldn't have surprised me like, yeah okay you know what I mean he's a good okay. looking leading guy I right. guess doesn't need to well, yeah you, Brad, Pitt, like... Brad Pitt you, you'll, never, you'll never know what it's like out here on the cold for us he doesn't have to rape to get laid <laughs> <laughs> Weinstein <laughs> it's the only way that Weinstein could get his dick sucked was if he <laughs> leveraged careers over it Brad Pitt, yeah, oh yeah, he, yeah. It's easy for Brad Pitt to be like, oh, the defender. Of, yeah. he, he can get his dick sucked just by clicking his fingers. Although I will say, in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he I does just, really I just, well at playing a creepy guy. Yeah, I just tacitly implied that we we're all rapists, didn't I? A little bit. I said you don't know you. what it's like out here in the cold for us. I okay. I just you don't have to rape. <laughs> right. To get I just tuned out. I was like, oh, let Sam just do his thing. Yeah. So we should perhaps clarify that none of us have... Uh... None of us have raped. <laughs> <laughs> um, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Have any of us actually assaulted? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just staring at... Um... It's quite, the, quite the Christmas episode. I'm just staring this. at a snowman <laughs> smiling at me. Sam, you can't touch the snowman. I know, I know. Um, I think we've said... This is the podcast that probably contains the word rape more than like a, a Jackson court case or something. <laughs> oh. Let's try not to say the word rape again on this podcast. Damn it, you just said it. Uh, after that. Okay. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah. sweet, sweet. Okay. We'll try okay. not to yes. we'll try not to say the word okay. that. Um Okay. Shall we let's talk about home alone? Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah. Michael, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Oh, it's Michael all Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Michael okay. Jackson. Wow. Okay. Oh, look at Jackson. He um, never went that white. Mm. No. Okay. So yes, Home Alone uh, is being rebooted. Yeah. Yes. By Disney, mm. of course. Uh, yeah, they own everything these days. Yeah. Mm. Um, so they've got casting news. Okay. Um, who's, um, who's playing? It's not Kevin McAllister this time, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I imagine it'll be newcomer. Yeah, yeah, no, he's not. Yeah, he's okay. not. He's not McAllister. Um, we've got Rob Delaney. I like him. Yeah, I like him quite a lot. Um, he was in. Is it Catastrophe? Yeah, he's in Catastrophe. Yeah, he wrote it as well. Yes, uh, and I think most famously internationally, probably for playing. Um, is it Steve in Deadpool Two? Like the, the oh yes oh, yeah. yes okay. because yeah. he looks yeah. completely different. Yeah, yeah, and you only notice him because of the photo. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. but that guy. Yes, yeah. I can you. I can't remember. The character from the film exactly. No, it's like, Steve. No, no, but like what his role is. He, he yeah, he joins X Force. But he's uh, just like a guy, right? Yeah, yeah like he's a poorly middle aged. Yeah, yeah, yeah poorly yeah. middle aged guy. Uh, he jumps out of a plane. That's right. Um, okay. And then dies. 
Yes. And then when Deadpool goes back in time, he tells them to go home before he can die. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. In fairness yeah. to him, though, like, because all the other ones die from incompetence, I think. It's the various things. Whereas he, he die from incompetence. No, he dies trying to, like, save one of them. Yeah. Oh, right. I thought his parachute just didn't open or something. No, no, no. no. Oh, right. Okay. You get one of those. One of them, like, goes into a telegraph wire. One of them falls into, like, a wood chipper. Yeah. Um, one of them, like, falls into the blades of a helicopter, okay. I think. Yeah. Whereas he, like, makes it safely, oh, but he tries play. to save someone. Yeah, so, Steve's a good bug. Yeah, uh, we've God got Steve. We've got Ellie Kemper. I like her as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's she's from? Something and I can't remember what it is. So she's the lead in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, but I think that, most people yeah. know her from The Office. Yes, yeah. um, but Kimmy Schmidt was what I was thinking of. And Bridesmaids, I think she's in. Yeah, I think yeah. she is. Okay, um, and then we've got Archie Yates. I assume he's the child. He is the child, and. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm back on another bottle of tonic. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he, Indi- Indian tonic this time, though, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's still... Uh, Whoa, it's still American tonic. It, oh, it, it, it's, it's still low calorie, so... Okay. You know, keeping that slim line Is up. there a difference? I thought it was just like, oh, it's fancier. You know? I just... Slim lines, healthier, in it? Okay. Indian tonic? Yeah. Uh, it's always Indian what, tonic. What's Indian about it? I don't know. But does, it make you, does it make you shit? In the street? <laughs> Okay, so Archie Yates. Yeah. It's a bit of shit. Like, you're just a shit person now. All yeah. oh, right, okay. Um, let's not offend everyone today, Sam. So. <laughs> We've already lost the backing of the Me Too movement. No, that's... that's, that's <laughs> this is the... Yeah. Thank you, Sam. That's our gift to ourselves, is that we just... <laughs> we we, we get to offend shit. everyone. Totally indulge. <laughs> So this was the uh, episode to have the feminism is cancer mug at. Yes, it was, yeah. Oh, well, let's just say it this episode. <laughs> yeah. Feminism is cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was going to tell you about this episode. episode this well. episode, we need to uh, start with an apology for. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah, so Archie Yates. Yeah. Um, he's in Jojo Rabbit. Oh, is he the kid in Jojo he's Rabbit? He's the kid in Jojo Rabbit. Okay. He's not the leader, I think. Um, not the leader in Jojo Rabbit? No. Okay. I mean, he looks. Yeah, no, he looks like fat best friend character. Right, so well, Jojo yeah, Rabbit. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he does. Um... <laughs> kid, you're fat! <laughs> Yeah, that was your opportunity then, Eddie, to, to slag off fat people. You didn't take it. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for later on. Um, um, what are you implying? No, I think that, um, the kid in um, the lead in Jojo Rabbit is Roman something, and he is the son. Polanski. <laughs> yes, Roman Polanski. <laughs> We're putting um, them all out the woodwork today, haven't we? Uh, he, uh, he's the son of a famous cinematographer. Okay, I, I don't know. Uh, or an editor. Okay. But yeah. Um, okay, yeah, so it's obviously currently working under the title of Home Alone. Uh, big shock. Yeah. Um, with any reboot, they just use the same title. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it originally, the report was that uh, Delaney and Kemper were going to play his parents. Yeah. But it's sort of shifted now to suggest that he gets left Home Alone. Are they um, the the robbers? Well, no, it, it, the, the suggestion is that the kid end up, ends up taking something from them. So. Oh, okay. So, I, yeah, it seems a bit... It says here uh, he ends up taking something from their characters. Um, oh right, he steals something. Yeah, right. Trying to give the kid more to do, is it? As if, so, as so if, he, if, so if he's just, he's just didn't have enough to do in the first. Yeah. So he's just going to become a crook, and then it'll end with him going to jail. Yeah, no, they'll be completely justified <laughs> in trying to like steal it back <laughs> what, from him. What, what, why did you try and kill the kid? Well, he stole a fucking shit. Yeah. Um, What's the? Let's briefly revisit Home Alone because we watched it last year, probably. Yes. I don't think as as Christmas thing. No, no, it was so. just a, oh, we haven't watched Home Alone. We haven't we should watched We probably that. watch Home Alone. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we've both seen it. I haven't. Oh, you haven't seen no, it? No, I haven't seen it. I've oh, seen, it was, like, the famous scenes. I haven't seen okay. it in its entirety. It was a childhood film for me. Um, yes. As was the second one. But all of them were, actually. Uh, where are you off? I'm just getting comfortable. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, but we watched it. What were your impressions of it as an, as an adult watching it for the first time? Uh, well, I thought the the like the wacky um, like he sets the traps and like follows yeah. the burglars. I thought that was most of the film. I was surprised right. for that that was basically only the third act. Yeah, I'm trying to think about whether it's actually a good film or not. I genuinely kind of can't remember because the because the his character the point of it is that Kevin McAllister has to learn to grow up, right? It's like he has oh, look to look after himself. I guess. Yeah, he's kind of like an, I don't know what does he have to learn because he's eight. He's eight in the first one. He's eight yeah. years old. But it's like that scene. You, you shouldn't have to grow up at your age, should you? No, well, I don't know, because he's like, obviously they're a huge family, the McAllisters. Yeah. And the impression, if I'm remembering correctly, he just kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Like, in general, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just gets accident because he has an argument 
with the parents the night before or something yeah. so yeah. he sulks off yeah. I, I don't just mean yeah so he sulks off upstairs yeah. and then they go yeah. Yeah. I don't again. just mean the inciting yeah. incident I mean you get the impression from the first scene that it's always like this they always oh, kind yeah. of forget so, about him yeah, yeah. so he's kind of having to learn to yeah, is it yeah like, what does he learn what is, does is he it learn? that he has to look after himself because that's where he's going to end up well I don't know because the thing that I think all the Home Alone films have in common there are certain like motifs yeah obviously you've got the kid alone at yes. home uh, they're the burglars mm-hmm. and then there's always a, an elderly character who either has like a bad reputation oh yeah or that. like a weird kind of story around them yeah that is that they then end up helping the child yes so the only thing I can remember from the original Home Alone, lesson wise, is it's the old man, isn't it? And it is like the, the, oh, old man Marley is rumored to be a serial Marley. killer. Yes. Yeah, like he killed his wife with a shovel and yeah. all that sort of stuff. And then he ends up being really friendly and he yeah. helps Kevin at the very end. Yeah, yeah. Although I will, I will say I've just looked up and the name of uh, Harry and Marv as a yeah. the, the robbers. Their nickname is Wet Bandits. The Wet Bandits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because they're always. Um, Marv likes to turn on the taps yes, after yeah. they've robbed the place. Yeah, so yeah. Calling card. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like one of the things that I like about those films is like the Karate Kid, which is some eighties and nineties films that were uncynical about child adult relationships. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Whereas, like, you could genu- have genuine friendships between. Yeah. It's not strange than Miyagi and what's his name from Karate Kid? Daniel. Daniel. It's not strange that they've formed a friendship. No, and that's the film is about that, yeah. isn't it? The film is about that that weird kind of friendship, but not weird. But it's, in, yeah, but in not, this thing, the film doesn't even like question it. There are no characters no. that are like, why are you hanging out with this kid? Yeah, yeah, not weird in that way. Yeah. Like, which would definitely yes. at least have to be addressed now. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, I kind of miss the innocence, I suppose. Yeah, of that I think sort they did that. I, I don't know how old Jackie Chan is, but like obviously they did the Karate Kid reboot. Yeah. And he at least looks a lot younger than the original Miyagi. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something they okay. intentionally addressed in the reboot. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But um, yeah, I have to rewatch Home Alone, I think. Yeah. Reassess it. Well, this would be the time to do it. It would. I would say, yeah. Well, I completely forgot until we started discussing the fact that it's Joe Pesci. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, yes. yes. In the same year he did Goodfellas, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, wow, hell of a year for, for yeah. Joe Pesci, isn't it? It was, it was Home Alone 1990. Home Alone is... Yeah, 1990. Yeah. Okay. Um, why did we originally start talking about Home Alone? Cause Cause, uh, cause, yeah, because so the, the, yeah, they're doing this reboot, which is coming out. Um, what was the... Do you think it's going to be Home Alone? Or do you think it's going to be Home Alone Resurrection or something? Well, they, yeah, the, the, the article suggests that it will probably end up with a new title. Okay. Um, Domestic Abuse. <laughs> no, they'll keep... technically what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they'll keep Home Alone, but I want to know what, like... Yeah, Rubbish. Home Alone colon domestic abuse. Yeah. Home Alone yeah. Homecoming or something. <laughs> Some shit subtitle. Home Alone I Stole Back. I Stole Back. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, Home Alone The Kids Are Twat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, so that, that, I mean, that's all, that's all there is at the moment about it. Yes. Um, it's a Fox production with Disney+. Plus. Mm. I think so, the original is Fox, I think. Um, I mean, they've been... Um, They've been doing Home Alone sequels for a while. Are we like on the fifth or sixth one? But they, I think there's, three. Th- there's four sequels. There are four. Yeah, three theatrical. Yeah, yeah and then the other two were with. Well, no, the third was with a different kid, wasn't it? The third was a different kid. Yeah, and, and then, then four and five different... were as well. I th- yeah, each yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Uh, five was a girl, I think. I know nothing of five. No, so nothing at all. I, I four was straight to DVD, and I remember buying that. Okay. I liked it at the time because yeah. the the house in it. Oh yeah, big house, lots of uh, like. Techno- technology yeah like and just like it, everything looked really good like it's a massive tree yeah okay yeah. yeah so um home alone 5 was called home alone the holiday heist and it was with a uh, female lead yeah right. so i mean the home alone franchise this that disney aren't exactly like ruining a franchise here because it was kind no. of ruining itself yeah at this point it's a tv series or is it a film no it's a film Oh, okay, all right, fair enough. Um, I was going to say, a TV series, I'm not sure you sustain that premise. Yeah, no. of course, for TV I, series. To be fair, I, I think, so Home Alone 4, which is Home Alone 4, taking back the house. Yeah. Obviously, three As fo- opposed to the uh, <laughs> um, first three. But yeah, but three focuses on... Home Alone 7, just let him the place. <laughs> uh, three focuses on a different character. Yes. <clears throat> four yeah. is the McAllister family. Oh, yeah, yeah that right. is... Kind and of they've got thing. divorced, haven't they? The parents have divorced. Divorced, but also... It's different cast. Yeah, entirely. Different <laughs> yeah. Cast. No, no, oh, so it's no. not it's not a reboot. It's generally supposed to be the same characters. I don't know if it's supposed to be a uh, continuation, 
But Marv is the villain in Home Alone 4 as well, isn't he? And he's yes. played by French Stewart. Yes. Right. And he's with uh, Missy Pyle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's that's but yeah, strange. Uh, but yeah. It's you've got Kevin McAllister. You know the character is Kevin McAllister, but he's nine and looks younger than he did as Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. Yeah, that's really. Why did they? That's really strange. It, it's like the idea of like it's brand recognition. Oh, we'll keep the McAllisters. We'll keep Marv. Yeah. No, because when he unless I'm misremembering it. When he they meet in the fourth film, him and Marv, there's a history there. Like they know each other. Yeah, but they yeah because it's yeah. set it's set after. So it is a continuity. Yeah, yeah. But he, uh, my That's point. Fact. Yeah, but uh, my point <laughs> is that Mike uh, Weinberg, who plays yeah him in the fourth one, looks younger than Macaulay Culkin did. Yeah, it does. Yeah, and it was made thirteen years after the original. Uh, Twelve. Twelve years. Yeah. Okay. When was it set? Um, well. I mean, he's nine in the story, so a year later? No, no, okay. no. He's eight in Home Alone. He's ten in Home Alone 2. And then he's nine in Home Alone oh, 4. Oh, is this, is this <laughs> a prequel to Home Alone 2? <laughs> it's sad. Oh, it's in which Marv had plastic surgery and then <laughs> yeah, had plastic that's surgery That's so confusing. <laughs> so it's a soft reboot, basically. Well, not even a soft reboot. It's shit reboot. is what it is. They okay. just made another Home Alone film and just, we'll call them the same. Yeah. yeah. That's basically it. Yeah, no, right? one's, yeah. no one's paying attention at this no, point. No. Let's get away with anything. But yeah, so okay. that, that's Home Alone. That's Home Alone. Okay. Um, are we, yeah, how are we feeling about it? Because like, like I said, they're not exactly ruining Home Alone as a franchise, but... Uh, no. You know. I mean, I'm open to generally anything in spite of how I come across. <laughs> you know, I, we don't know enough yet to kind of know either way. No. But... If it's good, it's good, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how... It is a one-film premise. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Because I can't remember how they justify him being home alone for the entirety of the first film. I know why, because they, they, the mother can't fly back. Yeah. And there's some contrivance about the flights yeah, at so Christmas. And they, yeah, because he won't stay with the neighbour because the neighbour's a serial killer. Neighbour's a serial... Yeah, you know, it's, it's so, kind of like... Yeah. They, they, there's, but he's got another neighbour that they don't even address, right? Plus, like, yeah. Uh, he's on the street. Yeah, There's, yeah, like, yeah. a, a neighbourhood full of serial killers. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember how they justify that. Because, uh, obviously, there's some... Right, you have the fun where he's, like, dancing around the house and he's, like, shaving and plus they have to shave yeah. him. You have the... And he, he's at it by all the, the food in the supermarkets. So yeah. He just buys pizzas. Yeah. That's your fun stuff. But, yeah, I, there's a moment where he's in church towards the end where he knows they're coming to rob his house. Okay. Like he knows they're coming. Yeah. Because obviously he has to set all the traps. Yes, yeah. And he basically just kind of says, this is something I have to do myself. I've got to solve this problem myself. I've got right. to take responsibility. Okay. Yeah, I really need to rewatch it to figure yeah. out. Yeah. What yeah. It's, well, it's, it's about those sort of they, they come home, he's really happy they're back. Yeah. And then the sequel happens. It's like, two, you know, two years later. Yeah. They fucking forgot him again. Because yeah. <laughs> well, you uh, think that'd be the one kid they like, keep an eye on? That, yeah. What's how what? bad parents? That'd be, you that'd, have be, to be. A, that'd be a funny inversion. If they were so focused on not losing Kevin McCarthy that they lost all of the other kids. <laughs> home Alone Six will be Home Alone Social Services. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's just like a really bleak, meta, like courtroom drama. <laughs> yeah. But they're losing custody of him because they just keep neglecting him. Oh, well, they, they might. Yeah, they could pull like a like some, a broad church where they just deconstruct the previous <laughs> films. Deconstruct previous films. Yeah, yeah. S- somehow he will only be six in this one. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting <laughs> younger. Young 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 young. You're badly than the Yeah, your child young is young young. literally regressing <laughs> because of how bad parents you are. Uh, um, what? Um, the second one, Lost in New York. Yes. Is that like? Does he get on the wrong plane or something? Uh, let's but, have I mean, that's def- That's a pre nine eleven film. If I've ever seen one. Well, it's all set around the hotel, right? Were they staying in a hotel? Okay, I no, he, 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 I googled the wrong uh, film. <laughs> he stays in a penthouse in New York. Yeah, doesn't he? And Donald uh, Trump makes a cameo. Yes. yes. Um, Tim Curry plays the. Yeah, he's, he's like the main villain, right? No, no, oh, Harry Marverback. Harry Marver. Okay, Marver right. the, um, they happen yeah. to be in New York. Okay. They've escaped from prison. Isn't there a scene... God, I've seen, like, bits and pieces of Home Alone 2 yeah. as well. Isn't there a scene where he, like, goes to Central Park and, like, meets all these, like, homeless people? No, okay, so... I, my yeah, memories, homeless woman with the pigeons. Home, right. Yeah, she's the old man of... Old man Marley of I the see, who one. just happens to look like Piers Morgan. Yeah, I'm, I, my memories of the second one are really patchy. Like, I, there's a bit, I'm sure, where, like, she... There's, like, seed goes all over Harry Moss, so all the pigeons, like, attack. Okay. Um... I remember, like, Marv, I think it's the second one, becoming a skeleton, like, by being electrocuted, and he briefly becomes a no, skeleton. No, I think that's the first one. Is that the first one? Yeah, okay. yeah. 
Yeah, I just can't remember the premise. But I know he ends up like using his dad's credit card to stay in this penthouse yes. suite. Yes, yeah. Tim Curry is the concierge. Yes, who's like suspicious of like where are your family? Yeah, and he keeps having to explain it away. And there is a scene in that that f- I can't watch. It freaks me out so much. Okay, because I've I as I I've previously mentioned on the podcast, uh, Tim Curry's Pennywise. Yes, is the indelible mark of horror in my head. Yes, and uh, so just Tim Curry by extrapolation, I need to adjust if I see him. Like, yeah. Okay, all right. Mm. And there's a moment in Lost uh, in Home Alone 2 where he walks into uh, the bathroom, mm-hmm. uh, the ensuite of the of the suite, and Kevin is like pretending to be like a ma- an old man in like the, the shower doing like a dance, and he kind of, he like flips the tables on him by going like hey, get out you bastard or like whatever the yeah. PG version is, and Tim Curry does this like reaction going like, where his <laughs> mouth drops and his eyes bulge. And just thinking back to that freaks me out. Right. Right? It's, oh, it's just like a weird thing yeah, that he does. Yeah. Um, and just imagining Pennywise doing it. But yeah. I was saying for the second one, just for the plot. Yes, please. Um, so obviously there's like arguments at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah as expected. Uh, and then at the airport, Kevin stops to replace batteries in a talk boy with his dad's bag. Right. And... Um, he loses sight of his family. He thinks that he can see his dad, so he follows that person. Ah, yeah. Gets on a flight to New York while they're uh, all like, going to just, no, just gets on a flight to New York. <laughs> uh, just like manage it. Again, a very cool moment. Because he stands on top of him on that film, doesn't he? There's a shot where it's like moving away from the Twin Towers mm. as he's on mm. top of it. Um, but yeah, so he, do, he, he does mm. that. Um, but I will say, smart kid, because he realises <laughs> that he has his dad's credit card and books himself into a Oh, the, the, yeah. the, the level Genius. of like mechani- mechanical prowess he shows in the first oh, film yeah. as well. Yeah. With, the, yeah. with that trap setting. Yeah. Like when he builds like he's child genius. He's got like these cardboard cutouts of like people on like this train, so it yeah. looks like there's a party yeah, from yeah, the yeah. outside. It's like bloody hell. Fair <laughs> play, Kevin. Yeah. yeah. Why though? But it's all why to me. It's like unless he's like a sociopath, there's luring. <laughs> You've seen Macaulay Cole. Oh uh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like he's he, he's luring criminals to his home so he can like <laughs> bodily no it's you know, not quite that abuse. bad no but like he I again go to a neighbour just go, go to the police just you're, you're eight <laughs> for fuck's sake you've proven you can look after yourself yeah you're alive yeah you, you can buy food you can eat prepare the food you can eat the food yes you're good yeah, you don't yeah. have to what happened to you that you keep trying to prove <laughs> that like you, you're a Rambo or something do they I can't remember I'm speculating as to what the details are at this point we should yeah we should probably rewatch it definitely yeah, yeah. yeah we second definitely. one as well because I haven't seen the second okay yeah I think the second one it's more fun in the bodily abuse department okay is it is um, that a case of um, this could be your new lexicon where a sequel like highlights what they think the most popular portion of the first film ah is? okay I'll have to think about that for the rest of the podcast but yeah yes. So yeah, we've talked about that before. Actually, the idea that like the second season of a TV show will really ha- ten- will tend to hammer in on like the things they think made them popular the first time around. Always wrong. <laughs> well, th- th- it's a delicate balance. It's like a difficult game to play mm. because it means things like Mr. Robot, for example, mm. where I don't think it ever got bad, but its second season is definitely its weakest. Yes. And I think partly as a result of, oh, people like the twists of the first season. Yeah. Let's really do that then. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of evens out ideally by seasons three and four. Yeah, they seem to yeah. regain their footing. Uh, True yeah. Detective is another example as well of like doing that badly. Yeah, where like people love it's the really music. It's really good. Of true detective. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. It doesn't reach the heights of one. No. But, but little does, to be honest. But yeah, no, it's it's a good little season of television. Yeah, because it's got that's Mahershala Ali. Yeah. And uh he's it's just him really, but oh, Stephen right. Dorff is the partner. Oh, okay. Um and Carmen and Jogo are the kind of three leads. Uh but yeah, so like the first season of True Detective, the score, uh the soundtrack was very highly praised. Yeah. So in the second season, you just have every episode has basically a singer songwriter just play a whole song. Yeah, it's like yeah, you've you've misunderstood. Yes, uh, you know. Yeah, and also just the tone of it. It's the just, t- yeah, and the philosophizing. Yeah, the, they just lean too hard into it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and think of a um a term for that then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we're carrying on with the theme of Christmas. Yes. E. T. Yeah. Is, oh, okay. is back. Yeah. yeah. Um, in an advert for Sky. Yeah. Is that better or worse than being rebooted by Disney? Don't, when, when joke, you, don't even joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Disney property, though, is it? E.T., no, it's not. 
No. It's Amblin. Yeah. Yeah. And whoever Amblin are uh, like associated with, I think. Well, I mean, Disney, Disney owns it. Didn't Disney owns everything these days? Well, I, Spielberg own DreamWorks is him, isn't it? Oh, I think it might be DreamWorks. Yeah, I mean, Spielberg. I'm sure he owns DreamWorks. So he yeah. manages DreamWorks. It's not Warner Brothers, is it? I don't know. Okay, check that, Eddie. Well, apparently, was it Vo- whatever it is Vodafone? They own it now, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> is it Vodafone? Who is it? I fucking know. Nokia. No, it's Sky, right? Is it Sky? Yeah, it's Sky TV. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, right, yeah okay. Sky done. Yeah, no, 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 it's not Sky. It's um, Now? Now TV? No, no, it's like a, an American channel or something, isn't it? So it's... Um, oh, which... Where is it? It doesn't tell me the one article I have loaded up. What the advert is for? Yeah. Well, it just says of- it's for Sky. That's Got sort of part of the problem with it is that you don't remember what it's meant to be advertising. Yeah. It doesn't even function well as an advert. No. But, that, okay, so should we describe what happened if you haven't seen the Yeah, the that's advert? probably best. All right, George, you, you take the reins then. Oh, I don't remember what happened. <laughs> you don't remember what happened? Well, no, I, okay. I, no, actually, in fairness, it's basically retreading the first film. Was, yeah. Well, the, the it, only film, right? It, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they didn't get to make the sequel they wanted to make. No. Did they want to make a sequel? Uh, Spielberg did. It was like a horror film or something like that. Okay. <laughs> so E.T. returns home. Well, yeah. he comes back. He comes back. Uh, to see a grown-up Elliot. Yes. Yes, played sorry. By the same actor. Uh, Sky Christmas, it's advertised. Sky Christmas. Yeah. Sky Christmas. Yes, played by Henry Thomas. Yep. Um, and he introduces it, you know, he introduces them to the family, the kids. They go out, do shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then essentially, it's all nice and lovey-dovey. They... You know, we go, you got the scene where he's on the bike with the kids in the sky. Yes. Um, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you going to make E.T. a paedophile? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> is that where this is going? I'm just getting angry. I, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Um, <laughs> no, I will not. No, don't. If either of you are thinking of sullying E.T. <laughs> no, no, no. But I will walk out. <laughs> say, don't, it's your house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how offended I'll be. Um, but yeah, no, just... Oh, it's, it's so bad. It's it, just so bad. Yeah, it, re- it retraces the like the the main yeah movements from E. T. The extra it's, crisis. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not bad as in like oh, it's terribly made or anything. No. It's just kind of like it's so cynical almost. Yeah, it is a cynical and un- unnecessary. Yeah, and again, I think I've said before on the podcast also that I'm not against advertising. I'm not one of these creatives that's like, oh, it's it's heartless and soulless. Yeah, and yeah. it's so necessary. Mm. But why that? I just don't know what you get out of it. Yeah. There, there seems to be this trend, isn't there, of like John Lewis started it, of like, now you have to make a little movie as yes. a Christmas yeah, exactly. advert. To what end, though? Because Christmas? But, right. like, okay, it's it's... I don't know what the science is in terms of, like, the marketing and uh, how customers respond mm. to that sort of stuff of, like... Do more people actually go to John Lewis as a result of those adverts? Yeah. Or is it just recognise that John Lewis do good adverts? I don't know what the actual financial yeah, implications yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, so I can't really talk about that. But it, I never, ever think about the company after the advert is done. No. It's just what they've presented. No, it is literally, mm. it's reaching the point now where it's just short films that these companies Short films, out. yeah. Like, they're the products now. Yeah, the adverts yeah. are the product. Yeah. And it's like... Why? You know, I'm not saying... I don't think adverts are inherently wrong, but they're also not a platform for artistic expression because it's Um, too transparent. They have to sell you something. Yeah. So you can never really buy into the art of it. Mm. Um, Like Marvel. Right, okay. (laughs) Because you know... You broke your own embargo there. No, 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 no. Because we're going to talk about Marvel in a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... No, the, just to make it clear to the listeners, the embargo extends to uh, news about individual films. Okay. So, so you that's typical, like, oh, uh, Falcon is set to appear in blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Or blah, blah's been cast in X. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wonder if it's like, in the case of these Christmas ads, because yeah, I think John Lewis started it. Yeah. And because it was successful, now everybody wants to do it. Yeah. Um, but it's, I, I don't know whether it's the typical thing of now, because everyone's doing it, it's not special anymore. Like, I don't know. like John Lewis stood out because we do these mini movies, but now everyone's doing these mini movies. It's like, oh, that's just what adverts are around Christmas now. But I wonder if it's like, 
it's a similar thing to like it, when E3 rolls around the mm. gaming convention E3 when that rolls around everybody's always like oh who won E3 because you right. get like five or six different companies who yeah. will do press conferences it's like oh who was the winner of E3 okay. who did the best press conference is that what it is now it's like who does the best who Christmas does the best but okay, John Lewis is the most famous one, though. Yes, really. but they've it's got still one. Is the thing like you've got? I think yeah. is this Sainsbury's first Sainsbury's year? Sainsbury's that claims that they invented Father Christmas. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's I don't know who the dragon because they don't do the dragon right. What? There's like that Christmas advert with the dragon who keeps setting things on fire. Oh right, yeah. Uh, that's not Sainsbury's. I don't know who that is. I'm not sure. If if I'm the person who can say what true art is, and I think I am, <laughs> then no, so like true art is like. Um, part of it is, is the unexpected. Like, true art gets you, like, ooh, okay. Mm. And it takes you in all these different directions. Whereas, like, John Lewis wasn't the basic... It, it just became... It's going to try and make you cry. That, like, every year... Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. going to try and make you cry. They, they tried it one year. Yeah. And it, it went, got a good it, response. It got yeah. a ridiculously yeah. good response. Yeah. Um, same with... Sorry, very quickly. Same with Cadbury's. But that was like novel, funny, cool adverts. Oh, yeah. You want, you want about um, the gorilla? The, yeah, Phil Collins. Phil Collins gorilla. Yeah. And after yeah. that, they just kept doing yes, funny. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Where what well, I would say, what gets me just talking about adverts yeah. and chocolate Twix, right? So Twix did an intersection. <laughs> Twi- Twix yeah. did an advert where it was like you had the left side and the right side. Yeah. Now yes. that they, that advert is years old now. Yeah. They still use that advert because it was that successful. Okay. Oh right, okay. and I, that's that blows my mind. I'm that, pretty, I'm I'm like ninety percent convinced that Coca Cola don't do like they just play the same Christmas ad every year. Oh yeah, 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 it's not, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't update it in any way. It's but always I, the I, same one. Yeah, they they change the little bit of text at the end. That's about it. But Maybe. they don't really need, again. They don't need to. No, it's no. like synonymous with like oh, it's Christmas Coca Cola. You know, but do the they, trucks? That, yeah. that's you do they about. even need to advertise? It might sound like a kind of paradox to say that it's so ubiquitous it doesn't need to be advertised yeah. because that's why it's so ubiquitous is because it's everywhere. Yeah. So okay. it's kind of a weird sort of aura I know thing. it's something that like... But still. Yeah, companies but, yeah. would probably never try that. Like, oh, let's kind of dip. Let's but, like, try and not But like take Coca-Cola or McDonald's, for example, something that just like everyone knows. Yeah. If like McDonald's tomorrow said we are not advertising mm. anymore, Right, Burger King would have a field day. No, no, no. Just like in the context of that, how long do you think it would take for people to forget about McDonald's? Well, that's the thing. Like, unless there's subliminal work going on, mm. and again, I don't know the science of all this stuff. Presumably, there is a kind of efficacy to adverts. Otherwise, companies just wouldn't do them. Yeah. But I can't say consciously, anyway, that I've ever seen an advert and gone, "Oh, you know what? And that I really now fancy McDonald's." Okay. Ever. Never happened. No, I was going to say... You- I did, after watching uh, Super Size Me, I watched it with my sister. Because we, we were... It in, had the inverse yeah, effect, did it? Yeah, because we watched it in school. It was like one of an assignment we had to do. And I watched it with my sister because all she knew was like, oh, McDonald's film. Yeah. I was like, you know, it doesn't like... Sell it well. Yeah, it doesn't sell it well. Yeah. She was like, no, I want to see McDonald's film. And then we yeah. watched it. We both just went for McDonald's. <laughs> okay. Um, that's the power of like advertising though isn't it that like you know e- that's or, supposed or to be brands. power yeah, yeah but or I, just the brands that like even after watching like a however long it is two hour documentary basically saying McDonald's food will kill you yeah yeah you're like oh that's yeah, good well, awesome. <laughs> and I'm not like you know I'm, re- I'm not claiming that I'm above its wiles mm. I may well be uh, a victim mm. of marketing yeah yeah but I can't say it's ever been conscious where I've seen a Coca-Cola advert and go, I really fancy Yeah, I, I, see, I was going to say, Coca-Cola is... One of the things I can that comes to mind is the Your Name on a Bottle campaign. Yeah. Okay. Where yeah. Loads of companies are doing that, though. Like Toblerone are doing it. I think Dairy Milk are doing it as well. Oh, where they, you have your name. I bought it for my dad last Christmas. We bought like a pack of Toblerone um, with uh, mine and my sister's name on it right. Right for him. Well, those companies are doing that now. Yeah. <laughs> you bought him Toblerone with your name on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, oh, okay. love Jordan and... Oh, okay, yeah. all right, okay. It was it was <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dad, here's a Toblerone with my name. Yeah, yeah. so it reminds <laughs> me of that, um, that scene in uh, The Sopranos where it's Carmela's birthday and the children, uh, they gift her... I think Meadow gives her, like, a two tickets for, like, a health spa. Right. So it's clearly for her. Yeah. And AJ gives her, like, a DVD of The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, because yeah. I, I do wonder about because the amount of money that McDonald's and Coca Cola and companies like that must spend on advertising. Yeah, and that's, and yeah. that's all money that they just like billions of dollars they would just save by just like all right for a month we're just not going to advertise. Yeah, and I do acknowledge it's kind of a contradiction to say they shouldn't have to advertise because of how everywhere they are. Yeah, but it's like I guess enough work was done to get them there through advertising yeah. that they now occupy that space in your mind. Yes. Like Coca-Cola wouldn't... But I don't know, because they are like... Would they be as popular if not for the marketing? And you have to assume yes. You have to assume, but then again, they are just kind of everywhere. Yeah. But like there's even, no, even they, just, they just bought out an energy drink. They bought yeah. an energy drink who, this year. Who, Coca-Cola bought it. Have they? Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't had it, but like... I mean, like Coca-Cola, it's the original soda, right? Yes. I would have assumed so. And it, it is. Yes. it does taste the best. Yeah. Like yeah. Co- of, of cola, anyway. Like, yeah. you know, it's... That's the thing, isn't it? Coca Cola. I might, I might get a Pepsi move now and again, but yeah, yeah. I tend to well, default to Coca Cola. Okay, Co- Coca Cola in glass bottles is the zenith. Yes, of, absolutely. Oh, yeah. soft drinks. Yeah, um, yeah. And McDonald's. I mean, okay, well, maybe that's it because I wouldn't say they, for me anyway, the best fast food restaurant. No, I think they, generally speaking, they probably have what's considered the best product. But I think, okay, I, I I'm really. If I if I was having fast food and I was wanted to be really awkward, I would probably go and get I don't know like the veggie burger they do there. Right. Mm. But then I would get chips probably from Burger King because I think they think, get the better chips. Oh, okay. Chips are much better in Burger King. Yeah. In McDonald's they're just kind of chips um, and burgers are better in Burger King. <laughs> in McDonald's <laughs> Burger King. Uh, we need some money, mate. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I agree. I think they're much better, much higher quality product. But uh, <laughs> there's not as much variety though. Because look at their main competition. No, this variety. Have, <laughs> variety. No, because you have KFC that basically just do chicken. Mm, delicious chicken. Many variations of chicken, <laughs> but chicken nonetheless. Yeah. And then you have Burger King, who mainly do burgers. Do you but then you have McDonald's, which has like all these different things. Did you also know that um, Burger King food is um, health conscious and environmentally friendly? Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Burger King helps you lose weight. Did you know that? <laughs> Yeah, no, I do like a good thing. I mean, do you know, no, because Burger King, like, the chip portions are slightly smaller than the McDonald's ones. So bigger, yeah, bigger yeah chips, but you're, yeah. you're getting bigger yeah, chips, okay. and it's definitely a better, slightly better price, so... Okay. It's, definitely, it's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I do genuinely think, um, seriously, now, we've poured ourselves out again. Because, <laughs> oh, we live um, in, in the valleys, you live in, in yeah. the city. Where there are many Burger Kings. There, there are, are several th- Burger Kings in Cardiff. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there are no Burger Kings for miles here. I think Cardiff is generally the closest Burger King we have. Whereas in McDonald's yeah. and KFC, there's a bunch around here. Yeah. Like McDonald's last thing. What the fuck are you doing, Burger King? <laughs> Put no, one in the valleys. <laughs> yeah, generally, just, just one. one. Just, yeah. one. Just, just one. Yeah, please. Yeah. I don't even mind if it's like the next town over. Just like, give us one. We will continually <laughs> shout you out if you move <laughs> one in the valleys. Yeah. Okay. And then don't advertise it, because as we've discussed, it's better. <laughs> you'll, you'll, yeah. Okay, so E.T. E.T., yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, um, do you think E.T. would eat a Burger King or a McDonald's? Uh, well, do we, E.T.'s a likeable character, isn't he? Yeah. Definitely Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Yeah. Um, yeah, has E.T. been used in advertising before? 99. In 1999. Okay. Um, he, was a, he, he was in an advert for something where they just okay. changed slight lines from the film. It was always okay. a joke, but I don't know if it ever actually happened. Did he do BT adverts? Oh, have a look. Because that was like a joke in school. See, but you, yeah, you say that, I, it sort of like creates, I don't know whether it's creating a memory or reminding me of one. Yeah. Of like a BT phone. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right to me. It does, you know? yeah. So I'm not sure. But what does it say, Mr. Pilot? BT um, being a, a phone company, if anyone doesn't know what BT is. <laughs> I, really, I don't know. I don't know if they're because it's British Telecoms. Yeah, it? so I don't know if they're international or not. Yeah, that's, no, that's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, to all Japanese listeners. Yes. Yeah. Crude. That, yes, that we yeah. yeah that we've drawn in. It's not giving me one that I can see. Okay, it probably was just a joke then. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, no, yeah, I don't know. Like, let's I, have a look. Okay. <laughs> Eddie's holding up a very commanding finger. Yeah. In the air. You're, you're holding this podcast hostage, Eddie. <laughs> I am indeed. I can fucking deal with it. No, nah, that just looks shit. Never mind. Okay. Fuck. Oh, it's a shame that we there's more to say about ET because it could have used that as a segue to Die Hard. Oh well. What? Oh, hostage. Oh, oh yeah. Damn it. <laughs> but I just want the listeners to know that I could have done that <laughs> <laughs> if it'd been the end of the conversation. Okay. What if? Um, um, 
it won't happen. But what if me already come up with like a better segue? Yeah. Your segue is going to look shit by comparison then. It is. And you've just like claimed ownership of it. But that is the risk I take on a daily basis. I see. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Okay. What have we actually got left to say about E.T.? <laughs> Yeah, well, we haven't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really talked about it. Like, I'm a big fan of the original. Yes, as am I. Uh, a big fan. Like, it's one of my favourite films from that decade. Yeah. Um, I love the music. So, in, in the advert, I saw that Henry Thomas was back playing Elliot as yeah. an adult. So, I was kind of simultaneously a bit disappointed that he had done that when uh, he was in The Haunting of Hell House very recently, which mm. I liked a lot. There's no connection, but just like... Oh, it's a shame that you've now done that. But simultaneously it's quite happy. does to you. I know. Yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it myself. Simultaneously quite happy that a child star seems quite balanced as an adult. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. good. You can remain an actor. You know, he hasn't been fucked. Yeah. Over. Um, but Hopefully he's been fucked. Yeah, as an adult. Or, or done fucking. I as guess. an adult. As an adult, yes. yes. Two other adults. Two other adults, yeah. yes. Consensually. Yes, of course. Uh we hope that for you, Henry Thomas. Uh, so there's there's definitely going to be a news article tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Henry so Thomas comes out as Weinstein's latest victim. <laughs> so I saw a forgave. I thought you were going to say fun-filtered podcast. So, uh, <laughs> they hope he's been raped. <laughs> uh, I saw a forgave it for... Oh, yeah, sorry. I broke the... <laughs> you <laughs> you were supposed to use the rule. I was going to say ear rape when the, t- the tonic started fizzing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought better of it. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. So I sort of forgave them for the inclusion of Henry Thomas. And then they started playing the theme. Yes. And that's where my patience mm. went out the window. Because I, you know, that theme is just kind of, no. Yeah. You, that can't be repurposed. No. no. You know, I think that's John Williams. I know it says a lot because he's done a lot, but I think that's his. The pinnacle. The pinnacle. Yeah. I think that's the peak. Is oh, the okay. Interesting. Um, it's just something uh, wonderful about it. Mm. Whereas like the Star Wars, it, they, they're all very, they're not subtle. Yeah, no. not subtle themes, yeah. but something about the ET. There's just something very childlike about it, and you know, yeah, um, yeah. I just kind of just think it's a shame, really, that they did it, that they did it, yeah, and that it exists. The, the only thing I will like say is I'm just glad that he doesn't say phone home. No, but he does. He does say I'll always be here, right? Yeah, and oh, then points to the kids' chest. Yeah. Points to the kids' chest. Right? What's it's advertising Sky I'll Christmas, right? Be here. Yeah. <laughs> Any doing an impression of ED there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> ED. ED. Um, EB? EB. Yeah, EB. Uh, yeah, well, right. So they're advertising what, like, the, the upcoming. So, so, yeah, so every year Sky yeah. brings has its Christmas channel that comes out. Okay. So they'll choose a film of some kind to promote it. Okay. So this year, but usually it's we've got these films coming out. Okay. Whereas this year they've gone, we're going to do an actual advert to advertise it. Okay, but they're just ET advertising will... the kind of, the roster of upcoming films, basically. Yes, but the advert is basically just E.T. is on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, it's, they're not like selling a, a, a phone or a new package. No, 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 no. It's, it, it's, it, it, okay. it's more, the Christmas channel comes out every year. Okay. okay. I think you, I don't know if you have to have it just to have, like, because there's the movie package with Sky. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if you have that. to have that or whether no. you get the Christmas one. I can't, can't no, I, I think it's part of it. And it's the fact that headlines were, like, E.T., like, resurrected yeah. for first time since film. And it's like, this is the, the, the format in which that happened. Yeah. I don't, like, E.T. should just be left alone. Okay. Just leave nothing. Leave it. Never well, a sequel. Been, no, he's been in other things. He was in um, Lego Dimensions, I think. Oh, was he? A couple okay. of years ago. All right. Yeah. Well, again... No, just leave E.T. where he is. Okay. He came and he went. Yeah. You know, he went home. Yeah. Uh, but I, I thought... Right, oh, yeah, do you want to explain to me how... Because he comes back voluntarily, yeah. I yeah. assume. I would have thought so, yeah. 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 And then he hangs out with them for a little bit, and then you just like, I want to go home. They, they show him, like, the internet and, like, what's happened since he was last here. Yeah. Yeah. He gets to find out what a tablet is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, he... He comes from an, an advanced species, right? Oh, yeah. Well, they've mastered like, and, space travel. Yeah, and yet their space travel is their their spaceship is very basic. When he goes back, <laughs> yeah, I like the like they show him here's the internet, like fastest Wi-Fi ever. And he just goes back on the ship. He's like, they are still a primitive. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, to him, it's the equivalent of the apes in two thousand. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it, that's maybe that's not um, like maybe he can actually talk, but he's just like ah. Oh. Kind of like you know. <laughs> he's the condescending. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, they're the not internet. capable of higher thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, but I, I was like, 
I was almost sick at the end. I'm just glad they didn't do it at the end when he was going to go, I'll always be here. And I thought that was going to advertise whatever the product was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I need to have a phone. Like, I'll always be here. I was like, just don't do that. Yeah. Please. And they didn't. They just left it. They told the story and then they just had the little... This is what it was for. Yeah. So, but if it was if it was a phone company, I could just imagine how it would have gone. It would have just been ET FaceTiming them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because you have to get ET phone home in there if it's a phone company, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Yes, you do. Yeah, genuinely, so fa- genuinely baffles his... me that that's not been a thing. I guess kudos to humanity for not making that a thing because it <laughs> yeah. seems like such an obvious thing to it, do. It does. I mean, when did so when did ET originally come out? Eighty two, I believe. So it's taken what forty. Almost 40 years, yeah. Nearly 40 yeah. years for them to ruin E.T. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. you know, fair play. It took yeah. them a while. Yeah. It did. It did. But now they've done it. Well, I, I hope it hasn't been ruined. I mm. hope it, that it hasn't. <laughs> you're going to watch E.T. Go you're going to picture the other game. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's just, let's hope that doesn't happen. No, yeah. let's hope so. Uh about five minutes ago, you said something about hostages. And something that, that <laughs> also features hostages yeah. is uh, seminal Christmas film Die Hard. Yes, which we we rewatched recently. We did indeed. Uh, did you have any fresh observations? On what did you have you seen? When's the last time you saw Die Hard? In? Oh, like four years ago. Oh, fucking! Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> How do you not watch it every Christmas? <laughs> Because I'm busy watching It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, yeah. yeah, fine. All right. You won up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's just a bloody good film, isn't it? Oh, it's bloody good. Yeah. It is bloody good. Um, Why is it bloody good, though? Because we were watching it, and I, I asked you then, I was like, okay... I know this is great. Yeah. But why? Like, yeah. What is it? Because there's something quite elusive about it, I think. Yes. Why it's so? You good. said there's almost like an alchemy to it, isn't it? Yeah. There's just like it's it's good and it's doing all the things well, but there's just something extra else that's yeah. like pushing it, just pushing it up there. Yeah. And what are we? What is that? What I, do we think that is? I don't know. We had lots of theories. We kind of realised how tight the script was this time round, didn't we? Yeah, and it's kind of it gave birth to all those films about you know man alone in an environment. Yeah. Has to kill terrorists one by one. Wasn't he, uh, uh, John McClane like the first? human action hero as well in a sense like before oh, him like vulnerable had, yeah vulnerable I know he was the first but like yeah like he kind of popularised yeah and I like because Die Hard is meant to be a western in meets the tower in, they in mentioned Turner. John Wayne a couple of times yeah they? Uh, yeah um, and he's that kind of character you know yeah. sm- sarcastic you know yes and John McClane could be like a cowboy yeah sort of name exactly yeah, yeah. you know um, was McLean because obviously now it's John McLean it's like cool yeah, yeah. was McLean just like a normal name before McLean's just film? like an Irish name isn't it he's, yeah. an, he's an Irish cop from yeah. New York um, yeah and I, it did give birth to all those films so, uh, so part of you would be tempted to say oh part of the reason it's so great is because it kind of created a subgenre yeah but you're not conscious of that when you're experiencing the film. That it's like that's not informing your enjoyment. No, of it's it. not like Alien. Where for me, uh, when I watched Alien um, a couple of years back, it was just a case of I know this is good, but I've seen so many of its derivatives that it's just ruining. The yes, original. this is not that. Not that. It's like not that. just the prototypical version of that. No, it's the best. It's still the best yeah. version of that. As Genuinely, well. yeah. But why? <laughs> I, th- I think. I mean, you said like the script is quite tight. Yeah, I think that cast, mm. partic- like Rickman and Willis, yeah, I think just works. Mm. Yeah, d- d- in spite, uh, Rickman is kind of it's a weird performance. I think that's part of what elevates it. Is it could it could have just been a villain. Yeah, but there's just something about the details of him. Yeah, that lift it a little bit, you know. And he's, he's got a great name, Hans Gruber. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. But like that when he's doing the American accent. Oh yeah, I'm not. Right, is that meant to be quite bad? I don't know. I, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Because yeah. obviously Alan Rickman has a very distinct voice. Despite he does doing an accent, he has a very distinct yeah. voice. Ho, ho. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny, though, because obviously he's been in communication with uh, John McClane up until this yeah. point. Even though he's putting on a different accent, it's still clearly the same fucking yeah. guy, yeah. you know? Yeah, so obviously there's a, we're referring to a scene in the film. If you haven't watched Die Hard... Why are you listening to this now? <laughs> Get your go, shit together. Go yeah. and watch Die Hard. Literally, for God's yeah. sake. Watch Die Hard. Um, yeah, there's a scene in it where Hans Gruber is looking for detonators, I think. Yes. Um, in a part on his own in a part of the building, and John McClane they cross paths, 
And Alan, uh, Hans Gruber pretends to be an employee who's escaped yeah. called Bill Clay, yeah. who's an, an American. Yeah. And he has to do an American accent to yeah. like sell the part. And it's dreadful. <laughs> oh, you know, it's just kind yeah. of around here. Right? Yeah. It's, it's really quite a non Oh, God, you're one yeah. of yeah, them. You're one of them. Yeah, he goes in English there. Yeah. You're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> it's really odd. Yeah, Clay, Bill Clay. Bill it's almost like Cal- San Fernando Valley. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, I was just like around here, you know. Yeah, like, oh, my God. Of, yeah. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's really strange. <laughs> but I don't know whether it's, if it's meant to be bad, <laughs> fair. They are California, though. It's in California, right? Yeah, it is in California. Yeah. Um, Los Angeles. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think it was meant to be okay. bad. Yeah. It kind of adds a nice layer say, it, to it. It works well if it yeah. wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because one of the things that I... One of my pet peeves with films in general is actors playing just normal characters who are great actors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hate that. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, I know it's hard to act being a bad actor yes but I hate it when they, their characters are as good at acting as they are mm. yeah and so it'd be kind of nice if it was a choice that is accents a bit ropey yeah mm. um, so let's just pretend that it is okay um, yeah. alright let's give Die Hard the yeah. Yeah. One like of, it needs one it just sort of fell apart quite quickly but one of the things observations I made this time was that all the villains were either German Italian or Japanese yeah which is obviously the axis of evil in World War Two. Yeah. So it was America versus Germany, Italy, and Japan. I yep. don't know whether that's intentional. Yeah. But um, Quite possible. I don't know what it says necessarily. Yeah. But it's a, a neat little detail. Yeah. If that is the case. If that is the case. It's a film of neat little details. It is. It? Yeah. I mean, because I think the biggest thing for me this time was that there's that shot when they've just taken over the building, and John McClane is kind of figuring out what the hell's going on. And he looks out across at another skyscraper. Yes. And there's a nude woman just yeah. kind of like luxuriating in her apartment. Yes. And whenever I watched that before, it struck me as an odd beat of like, why have they put that yeah. in there? Because they, ma- they, 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 they managed to get boobs in the film without having to force yes, ex- it in yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. And it's very 80, like the most 80 shot. Yeah. Um, and I think this time, I, it sort of clicked that oh, I think they've done that because like if, if she's happy to walk around Make you know nude yeah. with impunity. Yeah, no one can look in on what's going on in the building. Yeah, from the outside, no one's know? just going to look into Nakatomi Plaza yeah. and see, or look into the skyscraper and see yeah. all this happening. So things like that, neat little kind of storytelling. Yeah, beats mm. um, that are really fun. Yeah, uh, Al obviously is a great yes. Uh, addition <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. I don't know if it would work as well. It would still work, but I don't know if it would work as well if he wasn't in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, what is the... Do we have any critiques? Because the one that springs to mind for me is uh, just before he kills the first terrorist, Mm -hmm. uh, he has him at gunpoint. He has a gun to the terrorist's head. Yeah. And he says, yo, you won't shoot me. Oh, yeah, why not? Because you're a policeman. There are rules for policemen. Yeah. He says, yeah, that's what my captain keeps telling me. And he whacks him over the head, instigating a fight. Yes. Mm. The dude's got a machine gun. And then he, they kind of roll down the stairs and he accidentally snaps his neck. Yes. Why does he hit him over the head with a gun rather than just like telling him to lower his gun? Because that line, uh, that's what my captain keeps telling me. That's yes. obviously supposed to set up that John McClane willingly breaks the rules. He's, yeah, so he's, he's not yeah. following a policeman's code of conduct. <laughs> no, yeah, I get that. But but you would think that, that that's a good setup for him to just kill the guy. You either... Rather than immobilise him. Y- and I guess they couldn't do that because like, well, we have to root for this guy. You can't just execute the guy. Yeah. He is a cop. Yeah. But I think surely it should have been a case of you try and get him to lower his gun and use him as like a, either for information or like a way out. Yes. Or yeah. Something like that. But I guess they thought, oh, no, nah, let's just kind of yeah. get on with the plot. But it seems an odd character decision to just instigate a fight with a dude with a with an AK. Yeah. And the, the yeah, dude's yeah, yeah. than him, right? I think yeah, he's like a tall... Yeah. yeah. He's, he plays the villain uh, Necros in The Living Daylights. Oh, uh, right. He's the chap who um, Timothy Dalton... Cuts his bootstraps and he's on the plane. Oh, okay. Flies yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A- Andreas Vizanevsky, I think his name was. <laughs> right. Little, little, yeah, little, that's your eighties movie action, action movie <laughs> trivia. If you're it is. That is his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there's that. There's that detail as well when they first get in and and, and that character is um, what's his name? The first terrorist who dies. 
I don't know. Carl's brother. I don't know. Okay. Tony? I don't know. He's um, fiddling with the electrical circuits of the building or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then Carl comes in and just starts, like, sawing through all these pipes. Yeah. And it's not clear what the problem is, but then, like, his brother starts, like, frantically having to figure out what's going on before he saws through the thing. Yeah, so he doesn't, like, electrocute himself. And that was just a nice... Like, looking back, it's, like, artificial tension. Mm. They're at... But no, it's like, I guess they're saying that the brother, that Carl is very reckless and just kind of yeah. impulsive. And yeah. you've got him trying to figure out on like a mathematical level and he's just like fucking sawing. Yes. Yeah. Really clever. There's, and stuff that occurs to you after the fact as well. Yeah. That just seems at the time like nice window dressing. Mm. It's like, oh no, that like actually advanced the plot and advanced the character. Yeah. And, and obviously you've yeah. got the scene right after he dies as well where um, that famous shot in the elevator of like the jumper. Yeah. Like now I have a machine gun. Yeah. It's like, well, why is John McClane... Yeah, that was another thing. Why, why is he doing... Why is he alerting them to his presence? Yes. Like but he's... Because obviously they start to talk mm. about, okay, go upstairs with like Andy and... Yeah. And McClane is like... Um, writing he's on top of the elevator. Yeah, yeah. Writing down the names of... He's getting details. So yeah, I'm saying to you, like, it's really cool, but yeah. why the fuck's he doing that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the film is smarter than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's great. I, I I like that if there was a female villain in the film, then Holly McLean probably would have had a little fight with her. Yeah. I mean, you've got the black hacker guy. Yes. CEO, his name is, I think. Yes. And then the limo driver, who's also black. Oh, yeah. Is parked in the... Yeah. Is stuck in the parking garage. Yeah, yeah. And then he sees him trying to escape an ambulance and he knocks him out. I was like, okay. <laughs> it's the 80s. You have to have, like, the black guy knocks out the black guy. <laughs> That's... Um, what, what do you call it? Uh, black on black violence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I call bullshit as well when they they leave. I know it's kind of a dramatic conceit, but when they leave Nakatomi Plaza. Oh, yeah. And then they just drive off in the limo. Yeah. Dude, there's like so much to be talked about. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, half of them are still convinced that you're a terrorist. Yeah, yeah. The captain, I think, was still kind yeah. of convinced, wasn't he? I love that it kind of it's a pin, the film's opinion of the FBI. Oh yeah, that was weird. Yeah, because the police, um, it's obviously uh, police presence increases outside the building throughout yeah. the film, and then towards the very end, you have the FBI come in, and they're just portrayed like these unredeemable buffoons almost. Yeah, fickle and just like they want to blow shit up. Yeah, yeah, weird. Yeah, weird shot. but again, a nice detail. It's and I just imagine if that's just exactly how the FBI actually operates. They just go around blowing up shit. Well, it's probably. Because I'm wondering the- whether it was genuinely. This might be a complete reach. I don't know when Waco and all that. There was a lot of stuff in the mm. 70s and 80s of like it was the ATF mainly, but the mm. feds fucking up. Right. And like like Waco killing all those people and the building was set on fire. And, yes. And like Ruby Ridge. I'm wondering whether it was a response to that of like the feds are just completely incompetent maybe I wonder um, as well if it, because obviously our main character is a policeman yeah um, and when the FBI comes in the policeman powerless so I don't know yeah. whether it's just like a because we're looking at it through the perspective of the police yes like the FBI and not someone they're out of touch yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. because obviously when they're flying with the helicopters they're like you know I estimate we'll lose about a third of the hostage and he's, hostages and he's like yeah I can live with that but exactly that's what makes me think that it's a response to like Waco and it could be that that sort of stuff yeah it could definitely be that um can we quickly look up when Waco happened? Uh, how am I spelling it? Uh, W-A-C-O. Waco, Texas. W- Waco Siege. It would be or something like that. Uh, 1993. 93? Okay, so it was before Waco. I was way off then. What? Look up Ruby Ridge. I need to be vindicated. <laughs> uh, 92. Fuck. <laughs> oh, Die Hard was then uh, very. Uh, it was <laughs> impressive. They, they yeah, fucking knew. Yeah, they knew what was going. I will on. say, I have just learned something that I didn't realize by looking up Die Hard, <laughs> which is I didn't realize it was based off a book. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the yeah. first one. Was, um, yeah. yeah, nothing lasts forever. In which um, Richard Thorpe. It is no, that's not, that's not right. Roderick Thorpe. Roderick Thorpe. Yeah, right. but the character isn't called John McClane. No, and it's not called Hans Gruber. <laughs> No, and I think he's like a lot older in the book as well. Yeah, he's an aging retired New York detective. Yeah. Called Joseph Leyland. Okay. Yeah, and John then, better. Yeah. <laughs> and then Hans Gruber, Anton, Little Tony the Red Gruber. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and it, actually, originally he had his daughter, not his wife. Are they right, okay. actually terrorists in the book? 
Uh, yeah, because that's a nice detail from the film, isn't it? Yeah. But they're not. They're, they're just simple things. It seems like a... Yes, they are. A weird... Like, they are on the buck. Yeah. Okay. okay. It seems like a nice... Um, it's a nice detail, but it seems like a weird stretch. It's like, well, yeah, why don't you just make them terrorists rather than robbers that are pretending to be terrorists, you know? But then they kind of explain it because they say, oh, if we pretend to be terrorists, then the FBI have to get involved. And that kind of, like, yes. Democrat, like, that red tape is just going to slow them down yeah. so we have time to escape. Yeah, it's very clever. Yeah. It's very clever, yeah. And it's not like a twist. No, no. It's one of the first mm-hmm. things... Uh, Takagi, the the owner of the business, yeah, the CEO, whatever says, because yeah, because they never say they're terrorists. No, everyone just kind of assumes. Yeah, he says what kind of terror because they 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 say they want to get into the vault. Yeah, and he says you want money. What kind of terrorists are you? Yeah, and Hans Gruber just laughs. He says who, who said we were terrorists? Yeah, exactly. It's straight away. It's like yeah. it's like really rich and layered mm. for an action movie. Yeah, yeah. but like it, not in a dense way. No, it's it's basic, but it's all there. Yeah, yeah. and it just kind of has that like um, it's very. Um, styleless but sort of in a good way yeah um, there's, I think it's one of the first shots I think it's one of the, the first time we're in Nakatomi mm. building and you have like the guy giving like the speech to all these people at the Christmas party um, but the camera's just sort of like on the up like up on the balcony with him looking down at the crowds mm-hmm. uh, and then as uh, what's her name Mrs. McLean Holly Holly McLean and she's kind of walking through the people the camera slowly Christmas. goes Christmas I just realised that sorry what it's at Christmas and oh it's for Holly I just realised that. Oh, there you go. That's another cool detail. <laughs> so rich. Fucking hell, Die Hard. Slow down. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'd think like, oh, we'll get a bit of coverage. We'll have like, we'll have looking up from the crowd to him and mm. we'll have like, you know, a panning shot of the room. But no, it's just like one camera shot that's sort of like over his shoulder and like... Yeah. Yeah, there's kind of no... Um, yeah, it's kind of stylus, but sort yeah. of, yeah, not to its detriment. No. Eddie, can you look up the German for shoot the glass? Because this is another little mini critique I have. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Which is in the sequence where, uh, like, Hans has summoned all his men to the floor that he and McLean are on. Yeah. And they get into a massive gunfight. Mm. Uh, because McLean is... Uh, barefoot. Barefoot. Uh, he instructs them to... So what is it? I don't know how to pronounce the first word, but it's Alf das Glass. Scheiß Alf das Glass. Scheiß... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's that. Shoot the glass. Shoot the glass. Yeah, Hans keeps telling Carl to shoot the glass. Yeah. And so McLean won't understand, presumably. Yes. And because they're getting baffled, just like, what? Yeah. What are you talking Carl And Carl's German, right? Yeah, they're both German. They're both German. They, they speak to each other in German yeah, yeah. for most of the film. Okay. I think. Yeah. And then he's just not registering and he's, shoot the glass. Yeah. It's like, okay, that's for the audience. Yes. But Carl would have understood. Yes, he would have. In done. German. Yeah, so yeah. that's a, a minor nitpick. I mean, Carl is kind of like the secondary bad guy. So it makes- he's he. I don't know whether this was a trendset, right? As well of like in action movies where you've got the leader who's not a fighter, yeah, like is the brains of it, yes, and then the main thug, yeah, who's the muscle, who's the muscle, mm, yeah, yeah. Um, I also don't know whether it was like one of the first action films where you had a good performance, right? As the, <laughs> no, genuinely, because you're like Schwarzenegger and Stallone, who are basically just like rocks, yeah, yeah, that are like doing their thing. But then you've got an actor. <coughs> At the yes. time, yes, you know when Bruce Willis was trying. Yeah, not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. But like he acts in it. Yeah, and it's, it's good, you know. Final note on Die Hard. Okay. Uh, for me, anyway. Uh, what was your like read of the title as a child? Because I always thought it meant to like perish in a hardcore fashion. <laughs> right. Okay. Like, oh, he killed them hard. They died hard. They died hard. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, I didn't know what the Die Hard meant. You yeah. Know? I think the problem was is see by the time. I really became aware of Die Hard. There was more than one sequel out. So the titles... Yeah, they just... Die Harder. So that, Die, die Hard 2, great, Die Harder. Though. Die it Hard is. with a Vengeance. Yeah. Yeah, Die Hard 2, Die, die Hard 4.0. Yeah, well, Live Free or Die Hard. Live Free or Die, die Hard. Yeah, yeah. And then a good, a, a good Die Hard to yeah. Die Hard. It's... I mean, Die Hard 2, Die Harder is the greatest action name of all time. Oh, yeah. But it does compromise. Well, that that supports what I thought as a child. Yes. Yeah. Die Harder. Yeah. You know, this time he's going to kill you harder. Yeah. And then you've got a Die Hard with a Vengeance. Die Hard with a Vengeance. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? It's a terrible name. But A good day to Die Hard's pretty bad. That, that is pretty bad. That's the worst one. They get worse. <laughs> um, like, it's sort of a meta title, isn't it? It's like what... It, like calling a horror film in the 50s like Freak Show or Spook Galore or yeah. whatever it's almost like it's a name for the type of film it is rather than 
anything. Um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for here? Diegetic. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, <laughs> for God's sake. <laughs> uh, it's not like a. It's not it's, hard it's it's not called like Nakatomi Plaza or no, like no. McLean. Yeah. <laughs> it's called it's it's a diehard movie because yeah. it's like adrenaline fueled. Yes. Weird. Yeah. And also like what does diehard actually mean? It's like uh diehard is like uh well if you're a diehard fan of something, mm. you're ardent, like yes. fervent. So is that supposed to kind of like um, it, it's basically just calling the film awesome. No, that's the thing, like die hard, they're both like action words. Aren't they? I Die suppose, hard. Yeah. Like, no. yeah. But also, um, I don't know whether it's supposed to reflect McLean's like attitude because he gets the shit beat out of him. He does. He, he does. is like a physically broken by yeah. the end of that film. Yeah. And I don't know whether Die Hard's supposed to reflect that. Like, in spite of all these like really like bad injuries, mm. he just keeps on going. Yeah, maybe. Could be that. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's that's Die Hard. So go. So what's Die Hard? It's great. Yeah. Is it? We're not going to have the. Is it a Christmas film discussion? Right. It is a Christmas film, isn't it? it? It's a it's a Christmas film whether you like it or not really. It is, but it's yeah okay yeah. But the only reason I'm being a bit contrarian about it is because it's always it, that and it's one for life, always at the top of best Christmas films. It's always Die Hard. Yeah, and it just sort of feels like a it is and it isn't. It, it's like it's set at Christmas and it uses Christmasness like throughout it. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I still wouldn't say it's like in in its DNA a Christmas film. Okay. It could be set at any other time of year. Yeah, that's but it's no a reason. nice. Yeah. But but also it's not a flippant Christmas film. It's no. not like it happens to be set at Christmas. Yes. Like it uses it. Yeah. Well, I was I was going to say it came out in July. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Strange. So that is strange. Yeah. Yeah. It's when's the second one set? Christmas Day. Uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah. The I thought first, it was the, New Year. No, the first two are both Christmas Eve. Okay. Okay. All right. And then just they dropped in. I think. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Well, four is Independence Day. Yeah, and that did come out in July as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah, July of seven. Hmm. Okay. Fair. Was there anything else on the list? Uh, well, we've got one more thing. Uh, a recurring, oh, yeah. a recurring theme yeah. on our podcast mm-hmm. in which we discuss Martin Scorsese <laughs> and Marvel. <laughs> um, yes. Because uh, the article uh, that's come out. Uh, is that Bob Iger is actively working with Martin Scorsese's people uh, to arrange a meet-up between the two of them. Right. Um, Not even Kevin Feige, Bob Iger. Yeah. 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 Very clearly just to hash it out and try and k- keep the peace, I suppose, yeah, as it okay. were. okay. What... what? <laughs> what exactly is there to hash out? Here? Yeah. What have I missed? Marvel's still offended... Okay, but like, and so I, I, it feels to me like they're gonna go take it back, take it back. Yeah, that's like all they can be. Yeah, they stay, or they're gonna offer him like a film or something. <laughs> no, I genuinely wouldn't put it past my Disney Marvel. Disney to direct Avengers Seventeen. <laughs> genuinely, to go. Oh, he said this. Let's capitalize on this brouhaha. Yeah. And then ask him if he wants to do it. It'd be fu- it'd be the biggest movie news of the last ten years. It know? was, wouldn't it? I think it genuinely could happen. Oh, actually, uh, he was not. He's not going to do it. But I think you actually might no. That might yeah. Because if he says no, yeah, then that supports the idea that he has a th- problem with Disney. Yeah, and if he says yes, he can't still yeah. be against them because yeah. he's working with them. Yeah. Oh, that's actually yeah. I think that might be what they do. But if it's not, that's that, kind of clever. If it is just the well, me- it's, yeah, it's, it's not going to work. But it's no. kind of clever. Yeah. If it is just a mediation, yeah. What what for? To what end? Mm. I I do gave his opinion. Yeah. It's not like he, it, it's going to hurt Marvel. No. You know what I mean? If anything, like how many uh, people who would like typically like support Marvel have gone? Yeah, you know what Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. I he's watch not, these he's films not anymore. converting anybody. He's no, preaching he's not, to no. the converted. Isn't yeah, he? exactly. Like. Pi- the, the the most it's gonna do is like people like us. So he says that and we go, yeah, he's good, right, kind yeah. of. Yeah. Even we are still gonna go see some Marvel films. Yeah. And the people who weren't who won't go and see more Marvel films aren't doing it because Scorsese has said has given his no. opinion on it. No. It just seems the most pointless publicity shit. Yeah. Yes. Ever. Yeah. You know? I yeah. It's so childish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Take it back. 
Like, no, he doesn't like your films. <laughs> Fine, he's not direct one of our films, please. He's not hurting your profits. No, he's, he's not hurting not. anything. No. He's, it, it, he's You're still going to have the biggest grossing film of all time. The, yeah, the most he's done is raise like consciousness a little bit. That's the most he could possibly do. People yeah. going, of examine it, examining it and going, yeah, I think he's right. At, at which point it really is juvenile to go, we want you to retract what you said. Because then it's just like, you, Marvel already has everything. They have everything. Why do they need more than everything? Yeah. <laughs> they need everyone to love them as well. It's just the most petty, pathetic, childish thing. Let's sort this out. There's nothing to fucking sort out. There are people who don't like you. Accept it. <laughs> Not everyone's going to like you. Be an adult, Bob Iger. Be a fucking adult. Not everyone's going to like you. Yeah. I can't even argue with that. <laughs> um, is that the extent of the news? Just that he wants to meet up? Yeah, the, yeah, the, and he's actively trying to get it done. But there's okay. no date. There's no yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, uh, if uh, Martin Scorsese wants to sit down with us and discuss this in person, we will <laughs> happily take that meeting. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah. yeah. You t- you tell you what, Scorsese. Let us when you let us know what day Bob Iger wants to meet you. And then on that day, just come talk to us instead. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I mean, it's best on the podcast that we had that conversation on our podcast, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But actually, yeah. Yeah. I'm both on the podcast. They can have some over there. Right. Bob Iger, get in touch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll arrange the meet. We'll, we'll smooth it out with Scorsese. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, we'll get this done. All right. So I think I've come up with a name for that term. Okay. That you mentioned. All right. So do you want to. Oh, well, we're on Sam's Lexus. Can play me in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you put you the clothing f- racks in the way of the, you know. I would like to take this moment to the, the fun the Middle podcast ages. is now sponsored by Sam's Lexa Corner <laughs> shit out can you remember the the, the tune that's right okay so on three okay one two three Sam's Lexa Corner too quick <laughs> da, 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 da. okay on three one Two, three. Sam's Lexicorner. Sam's Lexicorner. So welcome to this week on Sam's Lexicorner. Sam's Lexicorner. Uh, so, Joel, do you want to recapitulate what you said? What did I say? What well, I... you asked me to define a thing. Was this the thing, the sequel thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Uh, we were talking about something else for a moment. Yes. Uh, yes, so what I asked for was a term that describes when a sequel to a film or like a TV series like a second uh, Mm. season of a TV series when they try and hone in on what they believe were the most popular elements of the first series yeah is it to positive or to negative effects usually it can go either way yes but it's usually the the second offering of a thing tends to reflect what they at least perceive to be their strengths yes um I think the examples we gave earlier were True Detective Series Two, yeah, which leaned in on the kind of like the, the 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 tone and the philosophizing and the music of yeah. like the first series, and obviously that and just like, becoming that and just yeah. becoming that, yeah. Oh yeah, usually these kind of like phase out some of the other elements, yeah, and even yeah. like removed from like a series or a film series is like directors like Nicholas Winding Revan, yeah, who, people love him Drive, and then him now just doing neon soaked. Bear dialogue. Only God forgives stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to call it it's P P E A. Right. The perceived eminence application. Okay. Yeah. That's this week. On well, what, do you want? Do you want to break that term down a little? Well, eminence obviously it means something that juts out, or it means something that, that is praised. So your eminence is like what you how you refer yeah. to someone. You know, uh, perceived eminence. So it's not necessarily what is eminent about it. Okay. And then application, they, they are reapplying that eminence to future offerings. Okay. Perceived so eminence application. The perceived eminence application. Okay. Or P for short. Or P. P. Okay. Do you want so to we have... Um, Legacy s- casting. Le- <laughs> see? Le- how do you... Le- what? See? What? No, we're just, we're, we're, I'm, trying, we're, I'm trying to say what the abbreviations are. So it's le- oh, see. no. This this is the first. Just see. Well, this is an acronym, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is our first acronym. It's our first acronym, yes. Okay, all right. We've got legacy casting. We've made it, boys. <laughs> <laughs> legacy casting. God, we've hit my, this milestone. We can do anything. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, now uh, the jank concession. Jank concession, and now and now P, P the yeah. perceived eminence application. We're generally going to have to start writing these down. Yeah, we are. We are. 
Because there was one, uh, I'll play you out now. Yes. There was one that we came up with that you completely forgotten. No idea what yeah, it was even no, about. It's gone. Yeah. One, one, two, three. Sounds like Sikona. For fuck's sake. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, three. Sounds like Sikona. Bye. Right, let's play. Um, so, now that we've, uh, we're into part two of the podcast, and <laughs> yes. it's the Christmas episode, we have made the decision um, to play a little game. We have. Um, and we've timed it so it's getting dark, so I can't actually pitch see. Black. <laughs> it's yeah. not pitch black, but I can't actually see the cards properly. No. no. Um, we're going to play a game of Drunk, Stoned, or Stupid. Yes. I've played it once. Is it good? I have yeah, never played it. It's not too bad. Okay. Um, I mean, we could have just turned on the main lines, George. <laughs> For context, George just put his torch phone on. <laughs> We've never done that before, though. We always torch leave... phone. <laughs> torch phone. <laughs> we always leave it off. It's the thing. We always leave the lights off when it can be helped. Yeah, use your phone. It's better. Yeah. Let's keep it dark. We, we don't need the lights. We can, we can read in this. Um, are you 80? So who's starting? Well, you you start because you know what. Oh, do you want to explain the, the rules? Is. No, I'm just gonna uh, because there's no point that you can pick it up as easy as it is. No, for the just... audience is safe. Do you want to explain the rules? Basically, you pick up a card, you read out uh, what is what is on the card. I did a shit job. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're on a podcast, Eddie. You should have fixed this by now. Keep your mitts off, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you you there's various uh, things on cards. Um, <laughs> John's just trying to produce a psychedelic image. It's <laughs> <That's> like <laughs> shining his torchlight over a glass of water. Yeah. Um, like do it through the wall. snowman. Oh yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's just a shadow. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't do it out the house. So we're projecting out into the street. Um, yeah, no, it's just yeah, a shadow. Enough of the torch. Okay. Enough yeah. of the torch. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so enough drunk, stoned, or stupid. A game where uh, you have a card and what. One person, you take it in turns, one person reads out what says on the card, mm. and then um, people give their arguments for who should get said card, who, right. apply, who it's the most applicable to. Sure. Um, and the person who reads the card is the judge. Okay. Um, and basically, uh, for each card you get, it's a minus point, and you want to have the so best it's, point. Okay. It's like golf in that sense. The more points you have, the yes. worse you do. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. We ready? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Okay. So... So this is sings but shouldn't. Okay. Well, it's not going to be the singer. Is it? <laughs> well, as I say, yeah. Sam, you sing, mm. but generally speaking, no one complains about that fact. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, okay. I don't really want to vote for myself, so I'm going to have to say Jordan. Okay. I'll, I'll say Jordan as well. I've never heard... No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not a good singer. Right. I was in choirs a lot when I was younger mm. in school, but then obviously it's a typical thing. My voice broke and it's like, all right, it's enough of that. Then. Right. Um, I can't sing, but I feel like I'm okay when it comes to like hitting notes. I just don't okay. have like the, um, I can't sustain a note. Okay. I can't make yeah. my way through a song. Right. But I've never heard you sing, Eddie. Yeah, That's exactly. So, but it's because I sings, but shouldn't. So someone who does sing, but shouldn't. Okay. But is it because you should, is that, have you like, oh, I'm a terrible singer. I'm going to not do that. Well, at the, at the the risk of really throwing myself under the bus, <laughs> are you gonna sing? No. <laughs> oh, please sing! No, 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 no! I'm not gonna sing. Sing, sing, sing. <laughs> sing but what sing, I am sing. Christmas episode. But what you... I am gonna do okay. is direct people to a YouTube video. Oh, okay, all right, fair enough. Um, oh, actually, no. Yeah, we yeah. have that as a frame of reference. Fair enough. Um, yeah. In which. I sing a cover of Charlie Simpson's Cemetery. Yes. Quite badly. Yeah. yes, if you want to look up Edward Boylet on YouTube and have a good laugh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's on there. All right, fuck it, you then. Yeah, I go with you. I'll say Eddie. Now, I'm the judge. <laughs> <laughs> is, but, it, is, it, oh, is it like you have to decide or... If it's gonna an equal vote, you have to cast the decision. Well, I suppose it's probably the thing. The thing is, is I am the judge, but I will yes. concede that I am definitely probably the most okay. appropriate person to have for it. Okay. I just okay. didn't want to vote for myself initially. Okay. <laughs> Shall we apply the rule then that if two people vote, then that is the unless you can come up with a good counter argument. Yeah, you can win. You can win over a vote. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. If two can... people vote, yeah, okay. Yeah. You only judge if it's mixed. Yeah. Okay. Right. 
would survive in the woods with just a hatchet. That's definitely not me. Okay. I don't think it's um, me. I'm not. I don't have any like survivalist skills. No. Or anything like. None of us do. No. I. We're, we're um, not outdoorsy. Types. <laughs> when I was, um, I think it was my first job just after I left school. I worked on a burger van for a very brief period of time. Um, why is Why is that funny, Sam? <laughs> it just is. I don't know why. It, I don't know why it is, but it is. Okay. Um, I wasn't the biggest person there. If that's what you're like. I thought you were gonna say I wasn't the burger van. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. I, I honestly don't know why I found that funny. Actually. Okay, mm. all right. Um, but it was a period of time in which they were going around to different festivals, and they were serving yeah. different festivals. Uh, and I went there to one of them, helping them set up. Yeah. And they were like, "Oh, we need you to like sledgehammer these like wooden stakes into the ground." Right. So I think I swung the hammer like once or twice, <laughs> and the guy, the head of the program, usually went, "Yeah, you're a menace with that." <laughs> so it's definitely okay. not me. I think that there should be the option of just eliminating a card because it really doesn't say, apply yeah, to Yeah, it really us. doesn't apply to anyone. I suppose, yeah. I suppose it's, it's us well, saying... Can we, can who, we, who, the whole point is it's who's the most likely to kind right. of thing. Can we extrapolate okay. it slightly? Can we cheat a little bit? So rather than it being this very specific situation, is it just like who would be best at surviving okay. in, on their own? I think that's basically what it's asking anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's not the specificity of the tool. No, because it's supposed to be funny as well, right? Yeah. These yeah. cards are supposed to be funny. Uh, but yeah, who do we think would be best at surviving on their own? Out of the three of us? Yeah. In like a, a survivalist situation? Yes. <sighs> or just broadly, I suppose. I don't know how broad to make it. Surviving on your own? Yeah. Um, don't we all do that? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, you know, me and like you live at home, end. Eddie's got a house. Yeah. So he wins a little bit because of that. Yeah. Um, I'm also failing as an adult, though, so... It's yeah, yeah, we all are. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think I'd say, Eddie, on balance. I just don't think we'd have the... None of us are fit, like fit, fit. No. But you're the fittest. Eddie's the fittest. Yeah. Cause he, Am I? Well, you're on your feet for quite a long time, walking about. Yeah, you work oh, in a bar. You're, you're working in a bar. You're we right. don't. No. So, yeah, I'm going to say you. I, just, I, I wouldn't be asked. I would just I would get, let myself get killed. <laughs> Okay, I suppose I wouldn't do that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, I can't. I couldn't eat like grubs and all that sort of stuff. No. So, yeah. yeah. No. I take myself out. No. Of yeah. Room. I'd be really screwed for food. Yes. How how does this though? How, how does this leave. count as a a, a a loss to you? By us giving you this card, like, oh, you'll you'd be the best at surviving with the bare minimum, and that that means you're losing even more somehow. <laughs> Fucking game. <laughs> Game's yeah. the game. Give him a card. There you go. Brings Taco 12 Pack to party. There's been a couple of like Mexican food ones. We, we yeah. looked at the beginning uh, yeah, of the pack yeah. and we missed some Mexican it food Brings one. Taco 12 to a party. Taco 12 Pack. It's like a 12 pack of tacos. Oh, no. I wouldn't. I was going to say, I eat Mexican food, but I wouldn't do that. No. No. Is it? You have brought food to parties. When? I have definite memories of you like having food at parties. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Because the only time I can think of eating food at a party is when we order takeout. Right. Yeah, but that's usually a group activity. Isn't yeah, it? that's what yeah. I mean. Like in terms of bringing food, no. Like I bring food to the podcast. Mm. Yeah, no. I it was again. I'll rule myself out. It's not me. Mm. I just don't know which I don't of the think two of you it food. is. Again, we know a person who brings food to like you know. <laughs> this is the problem with the with the worst three people because it's yeah. always like oh this person we, we know, know someone else who yeah yeah. Um, is it like? Specifically food, or is it just inappropriate, like, things that are brought to the party? It's food, isn't it? Okay. That one. Okay. I don't know. Is this one? Yeah. we, is this, like, is I, this I, it? I, is I this say, when okay. we start the pile? We're going to keep arguing the toss if we don't have another person pile. Shall we, <laughs> okay. shall, shall we have another person pile? Right. Yeah. But we will properly debate through... Let's, yeah, yeah. It, it'll okay. be the audience's pile. Yes. We'll say that. It'll be the, the audience's audience pile. Yes. Okay. okay. In which case, my vote is this is an audience card. Okay, yeah. I would agree. And yeah. which one of yours was an audience card? Because uh, Would ones. survive in woods with just a hatchet. Okay. But that makes me sound cool, so I'm going to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we committed that now. Okay. So, <laughs> All right. So our first audience. 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 Do, no, no, no. Can we make it the... Uh... No, 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 no. Oh. Yeah, no, 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 no. No, he has different purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, audience, you are the more likely to bring a Taco 12 pack to a party <laughs> of the three of us. Fat. Fucking losers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fat fucks. Oh, God, the audience is going to win this, aren't they? <laughs> no, they're um, going to lose. Oh, yeah. Refers to themselves in the third person. I do do that sometimes. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Okay, go for it then. 
<laughs> Why do you do that? Is the question. Uh, it's a grandiose sense of self. Uh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Gets trapped by revolving door. Jordan. <laughs> no, I, 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 I do all right with revolving doors. If do you? Okay. Yeah. I just always happen to be walking behind someone, so I, I'm the. I'm the one left with the dilemma of do I join them in that compartment okay. or do I wait it out? So That's you get own. trapped by a revolving door. But are yeah. you the most likely to get trapped by a revolving door? Yeah. Give me the card. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more a statement on uh, luck than it is in yeah. competence. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'll okay. take the card. Yeah. Makes terrible first impression. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> I don't make great first impressions, no. I don't think. But no, I don't really a terrible one. Okay. Have I, well, yeah, have I made, do I make terrible first impressions? Because this is just something you're going to have to tell me. <laughs> I, the person who makes the bad first impression really knows about it, I think. True. I would say, I, I've got to be honest, I don't remember when I first met you. No, it was the, um, it was that night. It was, was it the, that night? The yeah. Jagerbomb night. We yeah. told them lost. The next podcast. Yeah. No, we have to release it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've definitely been told by people that it was a, not a great first impression. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going off. Okay. But like purely by accident. Mm, yes. Never because you've actually genuinely done something. No, no. Wrong. Yeah. I don't feel like any of us are like actively, no, actively no, no. do things where people are like, oh, fuck, no. You know? Only when I'm drunk. Okay. All right. <laughs> Speaking of which, quick little story. I wanted to tell a story about the um, taxi driver. Oh, yes. This was, again, um, the night... No, fuck, I'll just keep the card then. Yeah. Um, now I've overtaken Eddie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this was the night where we went out for your birthday. Yeah. And there had been much drinking. And they had. And uh, much more drinking. Yes. Uh, and then we eventually had to get a taxi home. Mm-hmm. Begin story. Oh, I can't remember, really. No, 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 no. No, no, I can't, I can't remember what I was saying to him. I sort of remember the timbre of it. But I don't remember exactly what I was, what he said mainly. Okay. Well, it involves politics. Are you sure you want to get into? Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Because it, it does. It, does it have... doesn't. It doesn't have to. It only reflects my troll-like spirit when I'm drunk. It doesn't have to reflect anything more than that. Okay. Um, I, I didn't you, vote. You, you, I didn't vote. You insulted a foreigner in a taxi. No, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't vote. No, no. So there yeah. you go. There. Okay. So we can't. Yeah. Either way. Right. Okay. Um... No, you, you remember. I, we went through the night. You clearly remember the night. Why don't you tell me? I don't story? remember what he was saying. All right, okay. So we got, we got in the taxi and the guy was like, was like, uh, how are you doing? You you have good Christmas party? And we were like, no, no, it's um, uh, our friend Sam. It's his, it's his birthday. He's like, oh, it's a birthday party. How old are you? Mm. And you, you said something like, oh, 25. I'm getting old. He went, no, you're a baby. Okay. And he had this weird, like, that's kind of like the... Um, the energy with which he said everything, yeah. which is what made the fact that the conversation got serious not long after kind of strange. Because <laughs> he was still speaking as though, like, I'm not really being serious. Like, that kind of... You know. Was he Mario? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really being serious. Uh, but yeah, I was kind of like, no, you know, I sw- I'll, s- I'll swap with you. Mm. And he had hair as well, so obviously mm. Sam was like, oh, I'll have you hair. I'll have you hair. Like, no. see, see, I don't remember. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'll have you hair. He's like, no, half my age as well. <laughs> I'm 45, half my age. <laughs> Um, I can't remember. He he is. Um, he was born in the UK. He is okay. like, but I can't remember of what heritage he's right. from. Um, but then obviously because the general election, the the UK general election happened. I think like the night before. Yeah, the, so, the, re- the result came in. We went out on the Friday. The result came in Friday morning. Friday morning, yeah. exactly. So everyone was talking about it at the club as well. There was like a guy. Um, there was like a younger guy just ripping into this older dude for oh, the yeah. choices that he made, yeah. like publicly, like really going in on it. Yeah. yeah, I think you had an argument with someone as well. Did I? Yeah. You certainly had a conversation with someone. Oh, I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, it, it, was, it was an argument, but it was clear that she was, like, trying uh, yeah, to we, get we were, to we, we were outside. Oh, shit! Yeah. Yeah! Oh, my God, I forgot. I completely forgot about that. Right. Yes. I remember. Yeah, yeah I remember. She was leaving. Yeah. She asked for a cigarette, yeah. and then it came up, and she was like, but why would you... Okay, yeah. Know? Oh, Yeah. I genuinely forgot about that. <laughs> her friend who was kind of like standing away, clearly pop- get, getting more annoyed by what was happening. Yeah, yeah. I, Look, I, you're not going to change his mind. Let's yeah, just fucking yeah. go. I just casually left while you were having this conversation. Yeah, Eddie, yeah, yeah. Eddie went. Well, I was in no position. Oh, the fact I don't remember it, I was in no position to actually have that argument. No. I was saying, actually, that is a perfect example of me going missing because I <laughs> yeah, exactly. was like, I was like, I'm not dealing with this conversation. <laughs> but you know, went to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what you did, Eddie? You had your first shit in a nightclub toilet. I did have my first shit in a nightclub toilet. <laughs> yes. And I, I never ever want to do it again. <laughs> it 
in fairness though it was like uh like half two three o'clock right which is not ideal time to go and shit in the no, toilet no no i think i said to you ideally you want to do it within the first two hours after that you're gonna have to be you're gonna be dealing with all sorts of fluids and stuff yeah yeah um, wasn't. Okay, so you set the scene. Okay, yes. So, yeah, he brought up the election. So yeah. He was like, um, I'm going to ask you a, a personal question now, guys. Who did you vote for? Mm. Um, and our friend who was in the taxi said Labour. I don't know if he actually voted Our for friend, who, whose name we won't say, no. uh, voted Conservative. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so he was just a liar. Yeah. Just straight up lying. He was like, yeah, lying. Okay. Uh, yeah. Survival instinct, basically. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, but he was like, oh, I voted Labour, and the, and the tax driver was like, good, good, uh, what about you, to you? Um, and I think you said I voted Labour as well, mm-hmm. even though you just didn't vote. Um, and then obviously he started to get into like, I just don't understand, guys. I just don't understand what happened. You know, and he's just going on like that. And then he started to like, okay, what Sam was doing <laughs> was he was, uh, he was not being mean to this guy. No. But he was sort of like, he was sort of responding in a way in which he knew that me and our mutual friend would know that he's taking the piss. <laughs> Even so though this what, is more of your drunk ironic humor. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. Even though, like, uh, in reality, the words that he was saying were not like bad per se. No, no. Yeah. Like um, the tax driver started going into. You see, my son. I, I go. Oh yeah, the tax driver was forty five. Presumably, his son was a young boy. Uh, but he said, like, oh, my son. He was. Um, he was really upset after we found out. He was like, Daddy, Daddy, the the, uh, the people of this country, they don't want me here anymore. And Sam was just going, ah, it's not on, is it? <laughs> ah, shameful, that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was kind of that, taking that's the, really you. I was taking the piss by sort of like really agreeing with him. You yeah. know what I mean? And like, like you said, adopting what I what in my mind a Labour voter will have said to him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The guy is fucking disgusting what they're doing to this country, isn't it? <laughs> ah, it's not on. It's not yeah. on. And then... It just kept going on. Yeah. Building an intensity. We finally... I was finding it hilarious. I remember that. Yeah, you were, you were like... You were wearing a hat and you were like biting... You took the hat off and like biting <laughs> the hat. So it's to not burst uh, out. Our friend was like kind of hitting me. Yeah. Shut, shut up. Shut up. Yeah, shut um, up. And we eventually got back to um, where we were staying for the night. So we got out of the car and it was all very pleasant. It's like, oh, thank you guys. Thank you for talking... Um, for talking to me about it. Um, I really feel better. And we were like, oh yeah, that's fine. And we gave him the money. He was like, have a good night. And he was like, oh yeah, have a good night, guys. And then Sam yelled, we voted conservative! And like fucking ran down the street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I enjoy that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Yeah, I just wanted to get that in. Uh, let's return to the game. Right, Indeed. okay. Right. Which takes on a different, now that I know that he actually did vote conservative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems the worst somehow. Oh, just, not even going to read it, I'm just going to give it to Jordan. What to say? Oh, come on now. What to say? What I, to I, say? Was, I was ill today. What to that's say? Incapable of being on time. Oh, mate, that was so <laughs> fucking you. I was ill. I sure. Couldn't... In the next special extra Christmas podcast, yeah. I have to define you using three words, and late is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, the, the, oh this is an audience one. Because we, we know someone... Okay. Who does this? Okay. So ask questions throughout the entire fucking movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely none of us. No. We are quite good. <laughs> we we will sit in a cinema in silence. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, that's that 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 In fact, yeah. I, I mean, I've told you the, the story of being in a cinema with someone mm. and then trying to distract me and I mean, like, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you watch the film, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's an audience. Yeah. Thing. We're all pretty well behaved. Yeah. Yeah. I genuinely don't know how I could... Well, I don't think I'd be able to watch a film in America, given this. No, I couldn't do it. I couldn't yeah. do it. No. It just seems so alien mm. to me. It's like when we went to see, was it The Force Awakens? Yeah. And people were applauding. It was like, the, yeah, the only two times it's ever, like, tipped over into American... Full-on American. ...film yeah. watching. It was that, and I went to see the 50th anniversary special for Doctor Who. Oh, okay. cinema. But that was just a, that was a cinema full of Doctor Who fans. Yeah. yeah, and we all went there for the same specific reason, you know. And it's like an event that it's it's never really happened before. Yeah. So you like it's you know you can forgive it a little bit, but yeah. like The Force Awakens, come on. I know, and I've seen like a few like in cinema crowd reactions to uh, like Avengers Endgame, the final assemblage. Yes. Um, the portal scene, right? The por- yeah, portals, yeah. which is you know, yeah, especially if you're a fan, it's a very cathartic scene. Yeah. And you know the music is great and everything. Mm. 
Um, praising a Marvel film. Uh, <laughs> Spoiler the, alert. The, the, they the all survive. <laughs> In fact, the the music is manipulative because it made me care, and I don't care about those characters. Yes. Um, but I've seen loads of intimate where people like where Black Panther emerges. What's the thing he's like his chant? Wakanda forever. No, no, Ebombe, <laughs> Ebombe, or something, right? Yeah, Ebombe, Ebombe, and then black members of the other Ebombe, yeah. and I've, I would I would just find that so obnoxious. Yeah. Not because they're black. And just be like, you know, just chuck because the fuck they're out. Because they're American. And the second one, because they're American. When, like, Spider-Man comes out, the women are cheering, and it's like, I'm trying to fucking hear the film. Like, yeah. the score has been written for this scene. Let me... Guys, shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, let me absorb what's going on. Yeah, yeah. All these fucking people screaming. It's just, Jesus Christ, <laughs> grow up. Yeah. All right. Sort, sort your shit out, America. Right. Sort your shit out. Right. So Texas that was as well. Car. Like, I found out recently, because i got a friend who lives in Texas... And I had to ask her about this because I found out that like they sell pickles in like Texas. Oh yeah, they're weird fucks. I don't I don't agree with selling alcohol to see a film. Yeah, that feels like it's asking for trouble, yeah, especially yeah. in like you know um, crowd pleasing movies yeah. like that. Um, Let's go and watch Happy Th- Happy Feet. I went to have a date. <laughs> I went on a uh, on a date to the cinema, mm. and my date got an alcoholic beverage, and I was like, oh. Oh no! Mm. <laughs> like you can't, you can't do that. Yeah. You're supposed to. I, I, I mean, ideally, no food or drink during a film. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I would say, I, I mean, I do usually get popcorn. There are films. There are certain films where I will get popcorn. And often, like, I often get a nice blast because I'm a child. Okay. <laughs> but like, uh, if it's a po- if I suspect it's a popcorn movie, you know, yeah. I'll get popcorn. But I, I trust myself to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas I can't, I just can't expect that from no. anybody else. I also, to be fair, usually I've eaten the popcorn before the film starts during the ads. Yeah. yeah, but also for the timing. It's yeah. like, I, you know, it's you're not going to know because you haven't seen the film, but you have to time it. It's so like, if you're going to rustle a tiny bit, do it when it's loud. Yeah. And then keep the, the, the food in your mouth quiet and eat. Yes. Yeah, when yeah. it's noisy. Yeah. I just, that's basic respect. Yeah. If you're going to eat fair, noisy food. I mean, it, it was a poor cho- choice to go on a date with to with someone mm. but my experience of being in the cinema with other people other than people like yourselves yes. where we there's an yeah. agreed silence yeah. yes um like hollywood <laughs> <laughs> oh. an agreed silence um other than that i do i think it's really bad for dates i think it is yeah because you know as I say, uh, so the example I have, I went to see Hacksaw Ridge. Yes. Um, and at that point, I quite enjoy, I was watching it. I wanted to see what Andrew Garfield was like mm. in the film. You know, he was obviously being touted for Oscar nominations and stuff like that. He was. Um, and so, I, yeah, I went to see it as a date. Mm. Um, and she tried making out more than once. <laughs> yeah, which is sort of like the expected thing when you go on a date to the cinema. But, but it's... I was watching a war film. <laughs> like, Time a place, love. Like, you know, there's you know, like people telling me, she's like, oh, I was like, no, <laughs> let's, let's not do this. I want to watch Andrew Garfield save people. And it's like, because it's like a really like brothers, like yeah. in arms yeah. film. Yeah. It's the last thing is like, she, there's, she was obviously picking up some frisson from this, <laughs> from the war stuff. Mate, just a second date, take it to a tank museum. She'll give you a blowjob. <laughs> So bad. It's not that bad, <laughs> but yeah, no. So, it, it, but it, it literally, we we like left and like once the film was done, I was like, yeah, nah, <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, hot hot food in the cinema. I I'm not for. It's a dark, enclosed environment. Don't be bringing smelly hot food. Yeah, in. No, no, because hot dogs is the thing. Like, I don't get it. No, I don't. You no. Know. Why why bring a hot dog into a cinema? Or like bags, na- just bags and anything yeah. that rustles. Don't like, rustle. Uh, nachos. I can kind of see where that's like because popcorn. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah that shows things yeah. I kind of understand. Like a lo- not logical because it, it shouldn't be logical to bring nachos into no. the cinema. But I can see where that came from. Yeah. yeah, hot dogs. I'm not quite sure where that's come from. No, I mean that's like, that's just kind of like generic concession food. But yeah, it's generic, generic fast food. Generic. Yeah, concession but food. It's like, why a cinema? I don't. Well, okay. Why do you think they serve food in cinemas? Uh, well, I mean, because they know we're fat shits so that'll sit down and enjoy there is it. that. Okay, and there is something to be said about like obviously um, most of the ticket money. I don't know how, what the percentage is actually, but not all the ticket money is going to the cinema. Okay, so you want a revenue source in which you're yeah. making all of the money. Yeah, because popcorn, like the markup on popcorn is insane. Yes, but why? Why do you think we? Or why do we buy it then? I suppose rather than why do they sell it? Well, it, it's is there. it just because it's there? Yeah, it's it's there. Is it as simple as that? It could be that. Simon Amstel, I think it was. 
made it, I don't know how accurate it is, but it feels kind of right. That the reason we eat while watching a film is because you want all your senses to be stimulated. Oh, okay. Because you're being stimulated visually, you know, hearing, it's all sort of there. Yeah. So not, taste, not touch, yeah. So it's like, yeah, you just want to be kind of sated. You're yeah. sort of indulging in something when you go watch a film. Mm. I think that's part, definitely part of it. Yeah. It's a treat, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's special. But if it was a choice between what we currently have and nothing, mm. I would definitely choose nothing. Yes. yes. Yeah. Or maybe just reevaluate the... Uh, yes. You know, popcorn. No straws either. No straws, yeah. No, just open drinks that you have to yeah. actually drink yeah. out of. And yeah, like like I said, popcorn, the markup's insane. That's probably the reason why it's become a thing. But also, yeah. there's much quieter food you could pick yeah. than popcorn. Yes. Because it's because it's synonymous with the cinema, isn't it? You think yeah. cinema, you think popcorn. Yeah. And yet it's so counterintuitive, <laughs> yeah. given what you're doing in a cinema. And yeah. sweets, like, sweets that you have to unwrap. Like, yeah. individually, yeah. you have to unwrap them, you know? Looking at you, it's- Dad. Well, sure, we've, we've gone to see films and you've had sweets like that. Yeah. Where, like, you have t- tried to... And, like, you know, you're, you're definitely not a bad offender at all. Like, we're all good mm. in the cinema. But there have been times where, like, you've just timed it just just badly. Yeah. Mm. Where, like, it's just gone quiet and you'll be unwrapping. <laughs> and then you'd start doing it slowly. <laughs> yeah. And every time I think you feel the heat... Yes. Oh, oh, my just kind of turn, mm. just radiating off me. Yeah. Because that's my problem with the cinema. One tiny distraction and I'm out. Yeah. I can't get absorbed in a film that way. Yeah. I'll just focus on the things that are annoying me in the room. Mm. And so I think every time I just turn to you and I go, if you're going to do it, just do it quickly. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, because he's trying to be quiet, yeah, yeah, it yeah. draws out yeah. the sound, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I'm like, just fucking do it. Unwrap it. Just do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's <laughs> carry on with this game. Probably owns a sex toy, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually, thank you very oh, much. Oh, do we want to talk about his... Uh, no. No? Uh-uh. Okay. No, no, you have to clarify whether that's okay before you say that. I okay. Think. And I was I was going to do it. Right, okay. I'm not entirely sure what you're on about. Uh, treasure chest. Oh. Oh, I don't care about that. Okay. <laughs> right, oh, I, yeah, case... I, keep, I keep condoms in a treasure chest in my bedside table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> A li- yeah. Like an ornamental track, not lo- lo- like a full blown track. No, no, yeah, I, 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 no I, yeah, I've I got was it in a shopping Cornwall. <laughs> yeah, you were never like hiding it, but when I lived with you, I think I was in your room looking for a key once. I was like, where would you put the key? And I looked in the chest and yeah. saw what was in there and I found it amusing. Yeah. But yeah, okay. okay. I think yeah. we should keep in the preamble also about like me saying, do not stop. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't care about that. Yeah, okay. okay. I usually, I, usually you know, I don't know. I you appreciate that that's something that I felt just couldn't be said. Oh no, I've I've literally brought people into that <laughs> room, <laughs> into that room, <laughs> gone to get one. And okay. Yeah, oh right, okay. I, I thought he was like, like, oh, I've bought people their own like condom for <laughs> the chest. <laughs> oh, I could do that. I probably would do that for someone else. <laughs> right. Would take the last parachute. Oh, you. Wait, why did you say that? Pizza. Right. Do you want to? <laughs> Do you want to tell? I love that you got this story in here properly. Do you want to tell the yes. wrong version of the story before I tell them what actually happened? You no, you you go ahead. You start, and then I will correct it. Me and Sam were having a pizza one day. Uh, we were just uh, yeah in town having a pizza, um, and the pizza arrived, and it was we were sharing it because we were younger, and you know, <laughs> we used to share when we were younger. <laughs> Those heady days. Not anymore. Those heady days. Well, no, we didn't have money back then. No. So you, you had to split your resources. <laughs> Um, Speak for yourself. I'm still broke. <laughs> I say I, I don't have I don't have money now. I still ordered two Domino's. Well, uh, two pizzas the other day from right. Domino's. Um, so yeah, the pizza arrived and it had been cut, it pre-cut, but in a fashion in which there was, if you were to divide it like four pieces equally, there was going to be one piece that was significantly larger than the rest, and one that was obviously smaller than the rest. Um, and Sam, over the years, has taken this as an example of my entitled nature. <laughs> Even though I wouldn't say I'm an entitled individual. A bit. What? No. Right. So you were like, I want that piece. I didn't, Okay, I didn't say that. Right. So the, the, the plate was placed in front of us with a pizza on it. Mm. And there was one particularly big piece. Yeah. So I said like, oh, I call dibs on that. Right. As you do when you're okay. that age. Yeah. And then you said, no. Yeah. And I said, oh, no, I, I call dibs. Okay. And you said, no. Mm. And I said, why? And you said, because I want it. Yes. And you did say it in a very entitled way. You said, no, no, <laughs> right. you don't understand. I want that piece. Yeah. That Because that's the thing that I remember. Okay. Is that sentence said like that. Right. No, you don't understand. I want that piece. Okay. And I said, but I want that piece. Yeah. 
And you said, but I want it. So I was like, okay. But considering we both paid exactly the same amount for the pizza, mm. what possibly can decide who gets it other than whoever called dibs on it? Yeah. And you just wouldn't have it. So that, yes. But we both I, had I, the same, like, your argument was you wanted it. My argument was yeah, I wanted yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but the, no, no, my argument was something has to decide this. Yeah. So the only thing, surely, is who called dibs on it. But that's not a fair system. What would be fair? Yeah, but the point is there was no fairness to the system. No, no, you, we you both, with them all. No, we no, both paid precisely the same who, amount. Because who it. is just constantly going around like, right, I'm ready to call dibs on a thing? No, no one. Usually. Yeah, no one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Usually yeah, dibs yeah. is a surprise. Okay, okay. So who, it's like, well, I okay. wasn't prepared so for this. So what should decide who gets the bigger piece? Well, a coin, if both people a coin flip may have been a fairer way of doing Okay, it. well, I that obviously didn't occur to us at the time. No, it didn't. But I also think that, like, I would have, ha- I genuinely, genuinely would have happily sacrificed that slice mm. had I not detected the entitlement at the time. Right. Okay. If I just, it was like anyone else and said, oh, can I have that? Yeah. I went, yeah, right. Okay. But it was because of what I perceived to be, like, you felt like you had the right to have it. Okay. I was like, no, I, I can't let him have it. No, then. I was just hungry. Yeah, I know, I know. But you said it with such, such entitlement. I was quite hungry. Okay, all right. Anyway, that's the pizza story. Let's okay. not let's not dredge that up again. <laughs> right. um, would would take the last parachute. Yeah, you. I refer you to the oh, pizza yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I refuse, Eddie. <laughs> what was what, what are your thoughts? I'm more likely to give it to someone else, so it ain't me. If if only just for the appearance of philanthropy, I wouldn't take the last parachute. Yeah, I I genuinely out of the three of us, I do think it's you, George. I, I I say we give it to the audience. I say it's you. Well, I'm the judge. So. But this two gets fun. We, yeah. already, we already sat this rule. No, yeah. we didn't. We yeah, sat we did. this rule. No, I don't think we did. See? See what he's doing? He's yeah, doing pizza entitlement. That's not entitlement. It is. You just, you're just saying that you can choose. You can't. We voted. It's yours. Just put it back in. No, fuck it. Just put it in your fucking, fucking pile. George, you're still not losing. Oh, no, it doesn't oh, no. matter. Let's transfer this upstairs. I want the whole podcast. Let's move it upstairs. Uh, okay. <laughs> Because she's going to walk in soon, and it's just going to be weird. Okay. And I want to continue this. George, just take the fucking card. <laughs> oh, I guess that card's just staying there now. Oh, is it? Yeah. Eat it. No. Eat the fucking card. No! Oh, it's in Eddie's pile now. Take the card. No. <laughs> no. Take it. No. Fucking take No! Bend over. No! Bend over. Take it. You want it? I don't want it. You got outvoted. We no, did. I didn't. I you decided, did get vote. I was not deciding votes, I decided the order. Yeah, how are you the deciding vote? Because I'm the judge. The, the, the deciding vote is if you're, the, the decision is split. Yeah. No, it's the judge. The judge gets to decide. I don't want to be honest person who does anything for five dollars, but it's fucking happened. If I said Eddie and Eddie said you, then you would have a deciding vote. Okay. And you could say Eddie. Right. But we both agreed. It was That's you. democracy. What are you, Labour? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not taking it. Take the fucking card. No, it's the audience's card. It's not the audience's card. I decide. You can't. You can't overrule other people's decisions. Yeah, I'm you the judge. You judge the deciding vote. I'm the judge. If it's split. If a jury's like it's not guilty, but the judge is like, I'm not convinced. No, that's precisely not how the system works. <laughs> if a jury well, says guilty, well, it should be. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not Jordan. That's not how this game works. Take the card. I'm not taking Just the card. take the I'm card. Taking... Okay. Well, it's yours, so it counts as one of yours. No. Even if you don't hold it. Whatever he ends up with at the end, yeah, we'll have one. one. Shameful. No, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. Ignore the uh, the acoustic change. Yes. <laughs> we have had to reconvene in the bedroom. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the game was getting a little heated and uh, needed a different outlet. Right. It's freezing in here. It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, We'll argue with anyone about anything. <laughs> yeah, it's a sound that goes. Yeah. Okay, can you pass me the... Okay. <laughs> you fucking leave the card <laughs> where it is. <laughs> okay. I just want to pick a card out. No, I know what you're going to do. No, look at I know what you're going to do. My hand is... I can't reach the cards. Oh, listen, yeah. right. Let's ignore Jordan's trolling buffoonery. The fact of the matter is, we'll count up his cards at the end. And add one. And add one. As long as he doesn't destroy the card, or eat it, or do anything to... Well, he better not do, because I paid for this. This is what I'm saying. He's not going to do that. No. So it's fine. Okay. So we'll just add it to his. Don't leave it. Give me the card. 
Give me the car. What car do you want about? Give me the car. I don't know. Car Strand me. I don't know what car do you want about. Just get out. No. 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 Get out. Ow! I'll punch you in the stomach and not today. You don't no, want that today. No, no, I don't want that today. So get out. Don't Give me the car. I don't want that today. Look at it. Look at the state of it. Come no. on. No. No. Eat it. Stop it! Alright, okay. Alright. Don't ruin my bed. Okay. Has no idea what's going on. The only reason I'll say that to you is because you have said that quite a few times. <laughs> the, last, the last few times, I have no idea what's been going on. I, I mean, generally speaking, I don't know what's going on a lot of the time. <laughs> oh, in my own it. bubble. That's I'm in my own bubble. There you go, mate. It's yours. It's um, yours. Enjoy it. Would drive three plus hours in hopes of hooking up. <laughs> Can't drive. Not allowed to drive. <laughs> Wouldn't hook up. <laughs> or the internet is. Okay. Or the internet is. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. What are we up to, gentlemen? What's our card count? Thirteen. Okay. Eleven. I one. Say twelve. Yeah. No, I'm including that. Yeah. You're not on eleven. You got yeah. way fucking more than I've had. No, I haven't. I don't have more than you. No way. Yeah. No, 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 you've had a couple of cards recently. No, 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 no. You no. have way more than that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, because you fucking p- put some back in there, that's why. 11, 12, I am. I'm yeah. Now. So it's 14. No, 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 it's not 14. <sighs> right, listen to me, George. I don't know how many you had. Yeah. I know you had a lot more than I did. No. So you've been quietly putting cards back <laughs> in the box. <laughs> no, I have Which not. is very like you no. to do. No, that would be dishonest. I'm not dishonest. Yes, you are. Fundamentally. <laughs> Right. One. I don't care can how we, many. Can we agree that's no, one? No, no, no. I don't care how many. No, we're counting together. I don't care can how many. Can we agree that is one card? I don't care how many you throw on the floor. Two. You've secreted others in your pocket, your body, the room, or the pack. I have not. Three. Yes, you have. That's no. three. Are we agreed that that's three? No. Okay. Four. I can't agree with what I'm seeing because conceptually it's inaccurate. Five. No. Six. Eddie, Eddie, don't even. It's what he wants you to do. Seven. He wants you to go through the whole pack to find the card. Just don't. Eight. Listen, by doing this, he's uh, lost. Uh, he's lost. Nine? He's lost. That's nine, right? No, you've lost. No, no. You've lost. That's the actual number of cards that are on the floor right now, and nine. I'm not gonna... I'm not indulging this. Ten? I'm not doing it. Okay. I will not pander to this. I'm gonna pick him up off the floor now. Uh-huh. <laughs> There's no point even playing now. <laughs> Because we don't have accurate numbers. We do have accurate numbers. That's not your accurate number. It mate. is. Eleven is my. You can listen back to the audio. I've, I've got eleven answers. No, no, you don't. Well, way to derail the momentum of this podcast, George. Well, Sam, you're the person who's accusing me of being <sighs> an idiot. A, a dishonest. A dishonest. A dishonest. Yeah, I'm not a dishonest. You spent ten minutes trying to hide a card. A card. One card. It starts with one card. No, because I, I no, I'm not like that. <laughs> Aren't you? No, I'm right. not a slippery slope kind of guy. I was like, get rid of that one card. Um, it's gone now. Yeah. yeah. You can look at them if you want. No, get away from you me. Can, you can, you can clearly see. <laughs> no, all of the. I'm not indulging this, George. I'm not indulging no, it. Look, Even for a funny wouldn't, podcast, wouldn't I'm go not out doing it. If they don't get up. No. Right, because that's because you because you were saying I'm a lazy no. son of a bitch, right? <laughs> Still has been baby collection because you said like Lego. Shut up. Still have Just Lego. stop talking. Make terrible first impressions. Stop impression talking. Because you've said that, stop like, talking. You know, stop people talking. Have, um, said that I'm not stop a good talking. first impressionator. Stop talking. You pers- stop talking. Personally? Stop talking. Precisely. Stop Precisely talking. Precisely measure substance stop that talking. entirely. No, to ensure stop talking. Equal, stop, 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 stop stop talking. Me, off. Stop talking. Precisely stop measure talking. substance to ensure stop talking. equal distribution. Stop talking. I don't know how much of it you will end up hearing. No. But um, Jordan, because he was projecting some of the cards that we were assigning to him mm. um, on an ethical basis, 
Um, and because it's Jordan. Okay. Uh, well, you said you understood the paranoia. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. That's fair. I cultivated the impression that he was secreting cards on his person or in the room mm. or in the pack uh, to uh, increase his chances of winning. Um, and I was wrong. And I was humbled. Uh, and the cavity search was a bit much, but... <laughs> yes, I... I, I... <laughs> I mean, so it that, got to the point where like I was going to say that is. I know you said that as a joke, but <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't cavity search. No, we didn't go that far. But no, I was yeah, like, okay. Jordan was in his boxes. I I went through all because the thing is, I was like, okay, I don't know what Jordan's end. It's the same with the gingerbread thing. It's complete yes. paranoia. Yeah. If he's doing this, I don't know what the end game is. Mm. Um, it's it's just, funny, like both like troll stories. Yeah. Podcast is like it's oh it turns out it's not a troll. Or yeah. there's some like weird like you know yes. oh this has just gone off the rails yeah. there's no being sincere like oh Jordan trolled us <laughs> and he succeeded well done yeah it's always been like the biggest failure but obviously what, what happened was because it, it might come across like really petulant over a stupid game but I in my, my mind was just going if he's doing this it has no end point mm-hmm. and we all just be playing forever yeah and the energy just died because my suspicions were getting worse yeah uh, so we decided to just stop and come back in with an old bin resolved. But, um, yeah, so I decided I'd go through all the cards to see if he put any back in uh, that he had already. And then Eddie counted the cards to make sure it was the right number. Mm-hmm. And I just thought while Eddie was counting the cards in silence, I would search Jordan's person. Yes. So I went through all of his pockets and um, his socks and his surrounding area. But, no, he was not lying which I'm still a bit confused about. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was because because I was um, consist like constantly denying it. <laughs> right. Like okay. even though we'd move on to different turns, I was like, no, I still reject this card. So I don't know why there was and just, also, like, things were spilling over. You were doing that thing of going like, look, look, I'm counting it. One. Yeah. On the floor. See, you were being trolly. Yes. I will say like because I don't know again how much they're gonna hear. Yeah. But I was trolling in the sense that. You were trolling the idea that you were trolling. No, no, I was trolling in the sense that I returned the parachute cards to the yeah, back. which we knew. Which you knew. Yeah. But I was claiming that I'd accounted for that card when I said that I had 11 cards. Right. I actually have 12 cards. Okay. That was the troll. Right. It just kind of flew off the rails after that. Okay. Yeah. So, so yes. w- <laughs> Because that's happened, I will now happily confess I have 12 cards. <laughs> okay, I currently have 13. Yeah. yeah. I have... I think it was 18. 18, okay. yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, because the maths works yeah. out. And I think we just completely lost track of where the audience were at, weren't we? They were on 21. 21. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so we're going to continue then okay. for a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> right. Should have been Amish. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. None of us are really Luddites, are we? No. Um, who's the most anti-technology? You're fa- Eddie, you're fairly connected, I would say. Yeah. On the social media and stuff. Yeah. You've got, is it a Mac? Yeah, I've got a MacBook. Yeah. I've got, uh, yeah, I've got a MacBook. I've got, I've also got a smartphone. Yeah. You know, I've got yes. 9,000 years old. <laughs> um, and I'm actively trying to figure out how I can get a tablet. Okay. Okay. Um, See, I'm not technological in that sense. I'm not connected in that sense. No. But all of my hobbies and indeed my intended future career they all involve a computer and you're you're adept at like software a little so you'll bit, get yeah. software and you're like right i know i can figure this out quite quickly yes yeah i'm neither of those things. i've got a laptop obviously yeah and i've got a phone that's mm-hmm. relatively modern yes like that's it so it would be you then I sp- it would be me i suppose i can see you in the hat <laughs> in the hat yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not like it's a function for him. Because when I think Amish, I think of like you know what, what they call the Jews with like the, the curly sideburns. The uh, Orthodox Jews. Orthodox Jews. I think of those. Or, uh, they're not uh, Hasidic. Hasidic Jews. Hasidic Jews. Yeah. They're not that. Are they Amish? No. No. We're Amish. It's a sect of Christianity that don't that believe basically a, the, the kind of humanity reached its peak in eighteen something something. Oh, so they stay at that level. So they stay at that level. Okay. So they don't have modern technology. They have okay. old farming. Right. Methods and Aesthetically, stuff like what is an Amish? Aesthetically, yes. Uh, they have like sideburns and, and a beard. Okay. And uh, the hat. They, yeah. You know, Amish Paradise. Weird. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, I can picture yeah. it. Now. They churn okay. butter. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> and well, they were weird little. <laughs> we can do it with your yeah. hands. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so to me, that looked more like you were trying to ride a motorbike really badly. <laughs> <laughs> 
maybe, that's, that's riding a horse, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe if yeah. you stop moving the handlebars up and down, sir. <laughs> Why are they adjustable? Yeah. yeah, also, please reattach them to the bike. This is the show room after all. Okay. Possesses superhuman bullshit capabilities. <laughs> Just keep it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't really dispute it. No. Can I? So, yeah, I'm behaving myself. I'm aware, of, I'm aware of what can happen in this box. Um, all right. I really wish we'd recorded the uh, the body search. It wouldn't mean much in audio, though, would it? It's the only thing. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose it would just mean something in the sense of me saying, please move this way, move that way, yeah. to utter silence. <laughs> and just like, oh shit, they re- it got really serious. <laughs> Um, so we just take pi- a pile each, like a mound each, and then just like, so you'd have to keep reaching oh, over. Okay. Yeah. Sense. Thank you. <laughs> My cards are being handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> It's pulled over for driving too slow. Now, John's been pulled over for driving too fast. Oh, thank you, Sam. <laughs> thank you. We were, we were all there, weren't we? We were, yeah. yeah. Well, not uh, Eddie, Eddie wasn't there, no. so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you got pulled because you were doing. I was doing. 18 and a 20 zone, sorry. <laughs> Fuck off. I thought it was 19 or 30. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like. Um, it was by a playground, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They well, were the time I was actually caught speeding where I was doing like 53 and a. No, I was doing 63 and a 50. Yeah. But in fairness, that was on the motorway. And it just yes. so happened to be a section of the motorway where the speed limit was dropped. Yes. Um, and I, I think this is okay to leave in because, yeah. Uh, when we got pulled over, someone in the car had drugs on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was thankfully a close I didn't, call. Thankfully, I didn't know that at the time. I the, so out. this is a very Jordan thing. So we get pulled over. Yeah. And the police officer says, "Yeah, do, but, do you know how fast you were going?" I was. I would say um, <laughs> the when we were. It was like a thirty zone, I think, where we pulled over, and right. I was the area we'd just come out of was forty. Yeah. Um, and I'd yet to slow down okay. enough. Okay. So I was I was getting to 30. Yes. But it wasn't, yeah. Okay. Uh, so he pulled over and he said, do you know how fast you were going? Yeah. And no, he said, do you know what the, the mile, Yeah. the restrictions are here? And you said 40? Yeah. And he said, no, it's 30. Yeah. And you went, oh, okay. And he said, you were going at however fast you were going. And you said, um, I'm not disputing you, but I was looking at the speedometer and it didn't go above 30. <laughs> no, no, and no, it, it was 40. It was 40, he, yeah, he 50, said, 50. He right. said, um, I had to go faster than 40 to catch up to you. Yes. So he said you were definitely going faster than 40. I was like, I wasn't. And I wasn't. I genuinely okay. wasn't. It was okay. below 40. Okay. <laughs> but, the, but yeah, that's the very John thing. I'm not <laughs> disputing you, <laughs> but I was, I was looking at the speedometer yeah. and yeah, nah, you're wrong. Also, generally speaking, yeah, yeah you have to go faster than... Like, if he's going, like, 40 to catch up to me, yeah. I'm clearly not going 40 because he's catching up to me, right? Well, you, you're going... You could be going at 40 if he's going over 40 to catch up to no, you. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. would have to be going faster than 40. Yes, but if you, if you were doing 45 and he was going 48. Yes, but he wasn't doing that. I forget the exact number. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter. He, it doesn't yeah. matter. He wasn't far in the 40s and he was catching up to me. It, you, the only one who drives is you. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Uh, did Walk of Shame in Halloween costume? Okay. Uh, well, certainly not me. Uh, I don't think I've ever dressed up for Halloween. <laughs> Eddie, you've dressed up for Halloween. <laughs> I have dressed up for Halloween. In Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> for the context of the story, I lost my virginity on Halloween. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and although, it, I, I, you know, Walk of Shame, it, I mean, it was from their flat to mine. And right. I lived in halls. Okay. Right? Um, but I was wearing a vampire cape. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did you uh, have sex and then kind of like hold up the cape to your head and kind that, of? That, I mean, that would have that would have been cool. <laughs> but no. But did you go <laughs> as you came? <laughs> Please. Uh, 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 <laughs> I didn't finish. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jesus! Just disappointed her for four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been slightly longer than that. Do you know how he knew it was four minutes? Because well, he was a count. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, when I left to go back to my <laughs> home, <laughs> every, every minute, he just go, what? <laughs> 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 it's just silence for a minute. Two. 
Even worse if it was counting down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Four. Three. Um, but yes, uh, well, once we were done, because I felt like it would be more obvious if I had the cape, like, over my arm, I put the cape back on. <laughs> and then left. Um, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I will take that card. Okay. <laughs> um, Weirdly enough, you in university, we one of the first scripts we had to write was a ten minute short film, and I wrote a short film about a vampire who'd had a one night stand mm. and had to get back to his crypt before the sun came up. Fair. So yeah, we had that connection there. Who's the vampire called Eddie? I can't remember what his name was. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, would trample a black kid on Friday? Would what? Oh, <laughs> would trample a kid on Black Friday. <laughs> would trample a black kid on Friday. Yeah, I thought Friday. that wasn't right. It's the, the specificity um, of Friday that makes that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would trample a kid on Black Friday. Yeah, it's like, you know, let, any other day of the week, I'm fine with them. Yes. But Fridays can't stand them. Okay. I think I, people do annoy me on Black Friday. Yeah. Mm. I don't think I'd try. I might kick a kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, because obviously what about the way? Because what that is asking, isn't it, is like who's the maddest for like Black Friday? Who's gonna like go in there and trample a kid? Like you're you're detached from it and you're still inflicting <laughs> violence. Yeah, on the I town. would be walking through town trying to get home, and everyone would be annoying me. <laughs> I was just kicking children. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I'd probably do that. Okay, all right. It's yeah. yours. Card's yours. Fuck. Maybe. I've definitely lost this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Fucking loves Christmas. Okay. Well, it's not you, is it, Eddie? It's not me, which is a... For, so, they obviously, they can't see it. I'm currently wearing a Christmas jumper. Yeah. But it's the Grinch. It is. Okay. So... Uh, have you explained your uh, unflinching disdain for Christmas on I'm, the podcast before? Uh, I'm Grinching. Uh, I'm, I'm Grinching. Grinching still. Oh, very nice. Um, I mean, I haven't gone into... I, ju- I just usually explain that it's not... I don't like it. Okay. I mean, there's deep sea, like deep mm-hmm. reasons for it, yeah. which are not really going. But like now, I'm in my mid twenties. Mm. I wor- I worked like several in a row, so I just I I feel like I've just kind of grown out of it now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I don't get ex- excited at all. Like, you know, when I'm thinking about like pre- you know, because my family will ask me for presents, I will think of things that James is gonna like productive. What I need, you know, oh, I need a yeah. pair of shoes, right? I guess I need shoes, then you know. I, I want a tablet. Yeah. Okay, they can all go in for that kind of thing. It's the um, it's the same with like birthdays. Like even in your twenties, I think unlike you know past that even there's like an artificial framework that your head occupies on like birthdays where it's like right, it's a special day or yeah. you know it's like there's an added something yeah. to the day, and it was for the first year utterly absent on my birthday. Didn't oh, so feel I, at, I mean, at all. You didn't want to go out. No, no, yeah. Has a group of friends when you're going out. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, yeah. But, like, part part of that, honestly, is, like, uh, please other people care. Do you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. can't be, I don't think you could be pumped for your own birthday. Other people have got to, like, right, so. convince you into it. Do you know what I mean? So it wasn't like I was proper birthday Scrooge and, like, no, I refuse. Mm. It's more just, like, I don't want to, like... No, I was going to say, I, I yeah. mean, for next year... Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm doing something on my birthday now with yeah. family, but... Originally, when I planned my birthday, my plan was I was going to be in Edinburgh on my own. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I could ride well, out, I, out, away from everyone else. I did spend the vast majority of my birthday on my own. It was nice. I was hangover. <laughs> yes, very true. But it was, you know... Yeah, it just... All that has been removed now. And I, it's sort of the same with Christmas. Just don't get it anymore. Yeah. You know. Is it possible... Uh, just more a question for you, Eddie. Is it possible, because you've worked on Christmas Day in, like, a customer-facing role... Is it possible that that has influenced your opinion in terms of Christmas? Um, I mean, when you work with customers around Christmas, it is difficult because most of them are cunts. <laughs> <laughs> well, what type of person goes to a pub on Christmas Day? An alcoholic, Jordan. Well, with no I, family. Okay. Look, <laughs> any yeah. answer that. I mean, yeah, okay. We, yeah, the regulars are usually who come in. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it, they are there to drink. We don't serve food on Christmas Day. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't get that. Yeah, I thought that's what you do. No, you do like, I, Christmas dinner on Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah like, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, and like you are obviously you're opening just to cater for the few people 
that like don't have anywhere else to go basically yeah but we or, don't, we don't want, cater food yeah which is odd because like, you, you think that oh I don't have anyone I'm not going to cook a meal for myself a yeah. Christmas meal I'll go to the spoons and have yeah. a packet of crystals and peanuts I'll go with the spoons and like have a meal there so it's odd or families they're like we're going to go out for yeah. Christmas meal yeah you know, yeah, yeah no, we don't do that yeah really strange um but yeah sure so what do you stand on Christmas <laughs> Um, well, I'm kind of like the other end of the scale with you, I think. Um, I'm not, like, obsessed with Christmas. I don't love, like, oh, Christmas, everyone has to celebrate Christmas. But, um, hey, don't move that car away from me. I'm not done yet. Um, but, like, I've always had a very traditional Christmas mm. in the sense that it's always been very family orientated. Never gone outside the house on Christmas Day. You, you know, you wake up, you have uh, your presents, then you have uh, breakfast, then, like, the rest of the family comes down and it's like, Big meal and presents before breakfast. Interesting. Well, we what we used to do is me and my sister used to wake up, go in our parents' bedroom, sort of have the presents that are in our stocking. Then we have breakfast. Then we have the presents under the tree. So we'd have like a like okay, little yeah, stocking. No, for, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that makes that's sense. how we kind of started our our Christmas. Then you have the proper presents. Then family comes down. Then you have the meal, and then Doctor Who. Um, although that's stopped being a thing now, obviously. Yeah. Um, Cordy Street or Roses. Cordy Street is the lowest ranked for me. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I remember it was obviously Roses, but I remember me, there being one where I didn't really like anything in it, mm-hmm. but it was Dairy Milk occasionally. Yeah. So they picked that. But I, 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 between Roses and Quality Street, I'd say Quality Street. Yeah, mental. Why? Because the strawberry and orange roses, there is nothing better. I don't, I don't even oh, know. Oh, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. I don't even know what they are. It's pretty brilliant, mate. Okay. Are they, um, what are they, like, like, like pieces, little... or are they, like, uh, is there a filling, or...? Yeah, it's, like, strawberry, cr- creamy filling. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's, like, it's square, but it's got, like, strawberry dots on it. Right, okay. I'm not sure about the orange. I assume the same. Okay. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. like to say that they had two orange ones, one which was hard and one which was softer. Yeah, I prefer the softer one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I typically don't like liquid and chocolate. Okay. I, I, I don't know who did that. <laughs> Who's like the first person to do that? You don't like liquid and chocolate. Like That's a black exploitation <laughs> film, isn't it? <laughs> um, but like caramel, I don't eat caramel because it's usually in liquid form, isn't it? I like, I like, I like caramel. When you put it in chocolate. You're very strange, aren't you? <laughs> <It's> strange. <laughs> Just like, I don't know, like the fact that you can, any liquid in a chocolate is like haram for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I find that kind of no, weird. No, it's, it's more like um, texture of it. No, not the texture of it, but like you bite into the shell and then obviously it like... How, how, whoa. And then it gets gooey and it's great. How, 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 how? What? How? Do you like cream eggs? No. Ha <laughs> 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 Sam has abandoned his post. Um, Eddie, do you like cream eggs? Of course I fucking do. Right. It's not one I like. <laughs> you don't like cream eggs? No. Why? What is there to like about cream eggs? What isn't there to like about cream eggs? It's cream in chocolate. <laughs> and it looks like an egg. It's like a yolk. But you just get... You know, like, they'll be in the shops in January as well. Yeah. Oh, is it because the fucking egg is like a... a like, <laughs> You go back to egg. anthropomorphized. No, no, it's purely a textural thing. Like I don't like when you like bite into the chocolate. <laughs> yeah, and then it's it crumbles like, on liquid. And then no, it's like a very thin layer of chocolate, almost like pops, and then you get like yeah. a full of liquid, and it's like oh I'm yeah, like bitten into something. It's like that chicken in razor head. <laughs> you know when she's cutting the father's cutting the chicken, or like that black goo is coming out. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's oh, lovely. Thank you. For reminding me of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I've always, it's always been a bit like oh, I don't like the. Um, the texture of this is like, ah, it's like I'm biting into something. Do you prefer dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you. Dark chocolate is okay in like, like after eights, for example. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're quality, great. Oh, I want after eights now. Quality Street is dark chocolate though, isn't it? No, it's milk chocolate as well. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But after eights, yeah, they're great. Yeah. Um, mental. <laughs> you're mental. <laughs> you're mental. But what's the best chocolate? Just full stop. What's dairy milk? Yeah, okay. No, no, no. No, it's no, 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 it's not, it's not. Why it's, is it not dairy milk? Because, like, that type of chocolate is the best chocolate. Okay. But I don't think that's the best chocolate bar, per se. No, it is. No, it's not. I Next, used to think it was Galaxy when I was younger. That's great. Galaxy it. Caramel, actually, is the best. Right, thing. okay. Yeah. Galaxy Caramel. Mate, don't sit in my room <laughs> and say that dairy milk is better than a box of Maltesers. Oh, I see. A okay. Malteser teaser. 
No, yeah, I said purely really. just like chocolate without like okay. Oh, no, oh, no, no, anything no. else, just chocolate. Okay, no, no, yeah. See, in which case, I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. See, for me, I've always had a thing for Dane, like the how you pronounce them, the dime, dime, dime yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Um, they do dairy milk dimes, don't they? That's a recent thing they've started doing. Yes, they do. Yeah. Um, but it's it's to the extent of I that's why I used to live near an IKEA, mm. um, and they could buy the bags with like the little ones in. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like five pound a bag. I would go buy them, eat the entire bag, and be so content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eating a cream egg. There's that bit where you get to like you oh, eat yeah. most of it, and you get to the bottom, and there's that just overwhelming raw punch of chocolate that you get. Mm. Yeah. When it's not crumbling anymore. Yeah. You know, it's just the base, the foundation yeah. of the egg. No. Oh, shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm big on chocolate. Yeah. There's a bit of that Cadbury yeah. shop in, is it Van mm-hmm. Not Van There's one in Bridget. MacArthur Graham. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Cadbury shop is there. They yeah. used to, because um, when I was younger, mint chocolate dairy milk. Yes. Loved that. Never had it. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. And they stopped yeah. doing it for some reason. You can't get it over here anymore. But that Cadbury shop, for like a year or two, they began importing it, so they would get like you, they were tiny bars. Yeah. But you would just get like these mint ch- chocolate crisp dairy milk bars. I'd buy yeah. like twenty at a time. Yeah, yeah. But they've stopped doing it now. Thornton's mint choc chip ice cream was the bomb. Oh yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Uh, they, they, I, I, I they used to do a chocolate fountain. I used to love that. Fountain. Yeah, yeah. I always forget about them. Like I, I there's been a few times I'm like oh, I want to pick up chocolate. Have they gone under? No, no, they're no, still, they're still there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although uh, in Cardiff we've now got a hotel chocolate. Um, which is like more expensive okay. than chocolate. Uh, more they, expensive they, with the worst of tastes. No. No? No, it's good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like I know I, I know I paid like three, four quid for a bar of white chocolate, but oh, I was worth it. <laughs> it's <laughs> so <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. No, it, honestly, it, okay. like my sister put me onto it. It's a great place to go, but okay. it is a little bit more pricey. Yeah. Have you ever been to the um I think the soul pops up every year in Cardiff? It was basically like a um chocolate like, they sell items that they've made out of chocolate but don't look like chocolate. So they'll sell, mm-hmm. like, uh, spanners and wrenches that are made out of dark chocolate, but they look like... No. You know, I don't know what it's called. Like, where you're kind of, like, modelling, basically, but with chocolate. And they've, like, painted yeah, yeah. it to look yeah. like a wrench and like okay. a lock and everything. Fair. It's yeah. all right chocolate, yeah. but it's more just for the novelty of, I bought this piece of cheese. Aha! It's actually a block of chocolate. You know? <laughs> okay. Chocolate and cheese, that's an interesting combo. Yeah, it, it's, it's just dark chocolate. They don't flavour it, but it looks like a block of cheese. Yeah. I do have a lot of Aero bubbles as well. Aero's brilliant. Yeah. Terry's chocolate orange. Yeah, that's definitely up there. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely Chocolate's up. good. Yeah. I don't know how, my, how much of this conversation is <laughs> This is just a normal conversation. Yeah, it is, like, isn't it? Taking it from chocolate, yeah. let's bring it back to Christmas. Yes, let's. With a question. Okay. In terms of who gets the card, <laughs> well, Sam hasn't actually given his position on Christmas yet. Oh no, I haven't. You, I would say you are fairly indifferent. I feel about. Yeah, but let's focus on the game. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, K- kind of. Like I, I want to like it. I suppose is the position I'm in. No, I feel like I'm somewhat between the two of you. I definitely don't like it yeah. anymore. I'm not against it. I I would like to like it. It's just not there anymore. Yeah. And I don't. I'm not. I don't actively seek for it to be anything more. No. Like I spend most most of Christmas Day each year. I do spend alone now. Yes. And it's fine. So, I I, I still enjoy some of the trappings of it. My father likes Christmas a lot. It sort of like brings out the child in him. Mm. Um. So I kind of indulge that a little bit. Yeah. But uh, I don't care. Really. <laughs> um. <laughs> So what, what does the card actually say? It says, fucking loves Christmas. Yeah, Jordan it is. It would be yeah. the closest to me. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, yeah, I have I, I associate a, I have a lot of positivity towards Christmas because of, by association. Yeah. You know, because of the Christmases I had when I was younger. Obviously, it's like, we're in our 20s, it's reaching the point now where... I think... Um, yeah. You know. So, yeah, see, that's, that's where it, it does come for me at Christmas. That, that mine is like the opposite. I've said it before, I think, like, collectively, we're, we're sort of, like, frosty spirits. And I think that, like, we're, we're past the age where we're young enough to yeah. enjoy it, but we don't have partners either, or children. No. no. So there's nothing to vicariously experience it through. Yes. So it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, even my, even my sister is now at the age where yeah. she's starting to reach that point where Christmas yeah. is less, it's yes. less of a childlike thing. Now. Yeah, yeah. So you made an observation 
uh, off when we weren't on okay. the recording. You made an observation that you thought that if I was with someone, yeah, I would be more inclined for Christmas. Yeah, and I thought about it after you said okay. it. Okay, and I don't necessarily know if that is true. Okay, however, yeah, reminding myself of like when I worked in care and how I my action towards Christmas there. Yeah, if I had a child, yes, possibly. I think okay. that's that's more likely to make me change. Okay. Because I want them to have a good childhood with Christmas. Okay. In in like comparison. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think I would go kind of. Um, there's how we've been raised, isn't it? And then like, there's that idea that every generation has to improve on the generation that came before it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, in terms of my parents, I would like to think raised quite well. There's not like, oh, I'd have to correct for that like absence yes, or yeah. generally speaking it was okay yeah but i think i would just go even like if i had a kid christmas would become a massive thing okay uh, yeah. you know like having to make it a brilliant thing yes um yeah no i i, I guess as far as definitely getting lego for christmas like <laughs> as far as um my observations about you it wasn't so much like i think a relationship would do that to you i think if, if they were yeah if they were massively into it i think they would kind of drag you teeth gritted into enjoying it a little bit um and i think i'd be the same you know yeah what's your favorite thing about the christmas season then because for me i think i can say this uh, it's the award season as well for films oh, yeah. so uh, all the screeners get sent out for yeah. oscar films and yes. they get illegally uploaded online so yeah. i get to watch all <laughs> the best films of the year basically yeah, the christmas yeah. Season. yeah that's fair enough um because I do that. I do that. I watch films illegally online. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about Use it? This is Fucking a court feds. Case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best thing about the Christmas season, on- honestly, it is snow. I quite like snow. Okay. That's not a guarantee, though, is the problem. No, it? but in terms of what you... As well. it's, it's, uh, you know, what you... I remember, like, you know, I used to live up, like, near Manchester. And I, like, you know, I lived in Cheshire, so... You got snow there plenty of the time of the year anyway. Okay. But going for a walk in the snow around Christmas, living there, mm. was by far my favourite thing about, you know, yeah. just sticking around in the snow with your mates. Mm. Yeah. Just making snow angels because <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> oh, this is a little shout out as well. I think that now it's become a, quite an annual tradition for me is Red Letter Media's Christmas oh, yes. uh, video, which I always enjoy. Is it a shout out if they significantly more successful than we it's are. Still a sh- it still counts. Okay. Maybe they can give us a shout out. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I always look forward to those. Yes. And, and Halloween is what they do on Halloween. They do on Halloween. I always prefer the Christmas ones though. Because yeah. I, I, we talked about this. I, I like snow in fiction. Yes. So if, if something is set in a snowy area, mm. for, for whatever reason, yeah. it will enhance my enjoyment of the yeah, thing. No, I, yeah, no, I get it. You get that. Yeah, yeah. strange, isn't it? Um... So, so I, I kind of like the aesthetic of Christmas, even if I don't enjoy it in life. Yes. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, but yeah, like, so I, we have a little tradition where, because my father's a butcher, <laughs> uh, he uh, will just give me like a shed load of turkey. Mm. And then on Christmas Eve, my mother will make like warm baguettes mm. and I'll have turkey baguettes on Christmas Eve. So I enjoy that. Yes. Yeah. My then, father um, usually cooks a gammon joint around about Christmas. Okay. So we have like gammon sandwiches for like okay. days and days. Days, yeah. Time. So yeah, so I go. I always go with my father's Christmas dinner, obviously. Yes. Yeah. And he, like all the meats, just yes. all the meats are there. Like loads of turkey and then just a bit of every other. Yeah. And what, what they call them? Um, Trimmings? No, no. Uh, sausages with bacon wrapped around them. Pigs and blankets. Pigs and blankets, yeah. 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 See, the last time I actually ate a, what like a proper turkey dinner, mm. I was I'd gone to my father's. Mm-hmm. It, it was it wasn't Christmas Day. It was the twenty second, the twenty third, I think it was. Because mm-hmm. um, then I was coming back or going somewhere else for Christmas, and so I went to his. And the day beforehand, I so I used to I what used to work down where my father lived. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did like a shift of work down there and then went out with them in the evening for like the Christmas get together with, mm-hmm. with all the staff. And then obviously we were treating the 23rd like it was Christmas day. So, you know, got up, made breakfast like we would do, mm-hmm. you know, and then had that in the afternoon. And I was hung over <laughs> for the year. Like literally, I think even the following day, I still felt hung over because right. the amount I'd had to drink 
and he desperately wanted to do a family picture where we all had like a wine glass in hand. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, if you put that near me, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> um, he, got, he got his picture. Yeah. The, the wine glass was but swiftly, swiftly moved, moved. Yeah. swiftly moved away, and I was given my glass of water. <laughs> yeah. So all in all, yes, yeah, so like Christmas Eve is I'd have that little routine. Christmas Day, as I said, and then Boxing Day, my extended family get together. Right. Okay. Because obviously they're all having meals with their individual little families on yeah. Christmas Day. We all meet on Boxing Day, and that for me every year is like a um, like a metric of where we're at. I don't really see them often. Yeah. It is pretty much just twice a year, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So that is always like, oh, I wonder how this one will be. Because it's it's always a kind of hell. Mm. <laughs> but it's sort of how fresh will this hell be. Okay. I always write something about it. Every every single time I've written something about Boxing Day mm. with the okay. family. Boxing Day for us was always like the, the calm after the storm, mm-hmm. really. You have Christmas Day where my parents were usually so busy with like everything. Mm-hmm. They didn't really have time for themselves. Mm-hmm. So while on Boxing Day, me and my sister were kind of like engaging in our presents, mm-hmm. that would be their Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. So my parents wouldn't have their presents until Boxing Day. Um, and then that's when they would kind of like, you know... Um, They'd fuck. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I just wanted to make them uncomfortable. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody! Merry Christmas. I think Eddie lost the game. Did you lose the game? Who won? We're all losers, George. Merry Christmas.